people in here, they've been inside from the start. They haven't had to survive. They just don't get it. They can't. The very thing that makes you different is what makes you special. Hmm, now I'm all warm and fuzzy inside. To fight for this city. To be the symbol of hope that the arrow never was. I am the Green Arrow. Welcome to the Fandom Zone Podcast. Uh, I'm Charles Skaggs, uh, driving the bus this week, and with me, as always, is the ever-incredible Karen Lindsay. Hello. Hello. Now I can't find the cow. And she's taunting me with her Monty Python, the Holy Grail. Like, she's got this cool, like, castle, the French castle, where they have the catapult, and they they fling the the farm animals, and... Yeah, it has a little, um... A little catapult on the yep. on the case, and you can fling animals yep. off of it. That's and now cool. I can't find the little rubber cow. Fetch a la bush. What? Fetch a la bush. Fetch a la bush. Fetch a la bush. It's got a cow and a duck and a pig and a sheep with a, a little rubber one. And the cats will be chewing on them if I can't find them soon. <laughs> But uh, it was very awkward to show you that. But well, I I'm thought looking, you'd I'm, enjoy it. I'm looking forward to the vet visit. Yeah, uh, great, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. No, I'll pick I, have a, I have a cat. I know how it goes. Um, so, yeah, uh, huge week this week. Oh, so big. We're, so we're now, a rush. We're up to seven now. Yeah. Seven shows. And uh, some really big episodes this yes, week, Yeah, too. yeah, there were. There's a lot of stuff that I was going through setting up my notes, and I'm thinking – trying to condense this stuff down i'm like holy crap there's like a ton here there's a ton here but we'll try and get Although through. no walking dead episode this week no there was <laughs> no no, it, no there's no walking dead right because we're no. i'm in denial you're in denial yeah uh it don't worry it didn't happen right that's what i'm saying it didn't happen it's the episode exists can exist because even with that ending it that ending didn't matter and we'll talk about it. All right. All right. So, um, yeah, we're going to run down The Walking Dead, uh, Gotham's The Premiere of Supergirl. Yay! Yay! Um, the Flash, iZombie, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Arrow. That's right. So, we got a lot on the plate. Let's get started. We won't muck about. All right. And uh, we're going to start right off with episode 603 of The Walking Dead. Thank you. And I say, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah thanks uh thanks there uh, uh what's his name nicholas yeah thanks nicholas yeah uh, we'll get into that uh okay. this one's written by angela kang directed by michael slovis and another strong episode of the walking dead it was so good three i mean the walking dead is three for three i think this so far, yeah so far this season um three strong so episodes close right, to ten right out of the gate yeah. So uh, this could be potentially the best season of The Walking Dead it, ever. Potentially. Yeah, it could be. We're off yeah. to a good start. Let's put it that way. Yeah, they're amazing. Mm-hmm. I just, oh, I'm still in denial, <laughs> though. Do you have a quick rundown you want to go through? or No, no, it's all you. Uh, it's all me. Oh, mm-hmm. you poor souls. I'll try and go work through this it. as best as I can. Um, okay, so with that horn sounding... Mm-hmm. Blair, Blair, and again, we're so, staying with the same time period. I mean, we're still yeah. not even past that same like hour yeah. or so. Yeah, we're still. I mean, uh, but uh, that horn just will not go away. I yeah, mean, <laughs> uh, but exactly. maybe maybe this might be the final episode with the horn. Let's hope so. Yeah. What are we, by the end of this episode? What are we up to? Maybe a day. Yeah, 
I think, almost a day. Well, I, well, I think this whole thing, I mean, it takes place pretty much within a couple hours, doesn't okay, it? Okay, a couple hours. I'm thinking. Yeah. Maybe, well, maybe, they were walking a while and they were holed up in the pet yeah. store for a little bit. That's true. Maybe, maybe. So, a few hours? A few hours. Let's say that. Okay. That works better. Okay. So, Tops. So, we've got, so uh, we've got Rick ordering Michelle and Glenn to guide those useless Alexandrians back to the safe zone. Yeah. Uh, he he makes the claim that not everyone will make it back alive, which surprise they don't. Right. Um, and he said he wants uh, uh, Michonne and Glenn to just abandon anyone who slows them down at this point. Right. So. And uh, he says it right in front of them. Yeah. He's like, which is great for morale. Yeah. Uh, you losers, if you're gonna slow us down, you're Walker food. Let's. I'm sorry. Right. Sucks to be you. To be fair, though, I think he is saying that to let them know, you know, step up your game or yep. you're out. You should have set up some tires like football practice and run through and or like some hurdles. and. Right. Work, We're not uh, running talking game. about here. This is work, not a game. You're working on your running. Uh, right. Running this is here. life or death. And we're not going to let you slow pokes like get us killed. Right. So. And we know what it's like out here. So... Yep. Too bad. <laughs> so, of course, several of the useless Alexandrians either flee or get killed by walkers. Yeah. Uh, the Floppy group, hat. Yep. The group decides to stop in a nearby town uh, to, you know, pick up a pack of smokes, you know, with some magazines. Yeah, that's whatever. it. Yeah. Um, they, they're trying to staunch this uh, guy Scott's bleeding leg wound mm -hmm. and to see if they can find a working car or something. Mm-hmm. They, of course, end up getting quickly surrounded by walkers, and they're forced to take shelter in a nearby pet shop mm -hmm. where they can have a – they can complain about their dead parrot. That's right. <laughs> and uh, It's bleeding and demised. Maybe talk about their West Side girls and their West Side boys. Nice. Thank you. The West End girls. <laughs> yes. West End girls. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. So, 80s <laughs> flashback. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um. So Glenn, because he's always walker bait, uh, volunteers to distract the walkers by setting the building ablaze. Mm-hmm. Uh, a building. I should not say, not the building they're in, but some other right, building. Right, right. Another building. Yeah. So Nicol Nicholas, uh, Mr. L Wonderful, uh, he's like, oh, I know a building. And uh, let me help you with that. I'm so angry right now. <laughs> the seething. Good. Let the hate flow. Good. Fires at the side <laughs> of my face. The laser beam eyes. Pew, yeah. Pew, pew. Oh, no. We'll get to the sharks with laser beams later. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's another show. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome, wasn't it? I know. That was awesome, right? <laughs> King shark. Okay. Yeah. Um, Nicholas, so, not so much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so once in Glenn and Nicholas leave the pet store, the big herd shows up. Mm-hmm. And it forces them to flee before creating that flaming diversion and leaves only Michonne, Heath, Scott, David, and Annie, the Expendables, right. in, the, in the pet store. Yeah. So, to their credit, uh, yeah. the Alexandrians say, leave us behind. Right. To their credit. Right. We're just, uh, the, uh, the two that are injured. Yeah. They're like, you know, we're done for, man. Go on without us. Right. We're just going to slow you down. Yeah. And Michonne is like, look, I don't care what Rick said. Mm -hmm. We're not going to leave you guys alone. Yep. <laughs> just this once, everybody lives. <laughs> uh, except no, not so no, they, no, not so Because this is The Walking Dead, of course. Right. right. Yeah, not Doctor Who. So, yeah. R right. <laughs> see what I did there? I do see what you did there. I had to work in Doctor Who somehow. Yeah. It's, it's like Jesse with my our friend Jesse with Bruce Springsteen. I, That's right. I take a drink. Yeah, take a drink. <laughs> um, so, of course, seeing No Way Out. Uh, oh, wait. I'm sorry. Uh, before that. Um, so the walkers attack the pet store. And Michonne's group is forced to flee the pet store, losing David and Annie to the walkers, as we right. talked about. Uh, but Glenn, they are slowed down. Yes, they are slowed down. By David down. and Annie. Right. So they did buy them time. Right. Annie by shooting them and by, you know, getting eaten. Mm -hmm. And then David by them climbing the wall. And Now, why did they just stand there and look at David instead of shooting him and putting him out of his misery? Because they're useless Alexandrians? Still. Yeah, I know. Michonne was there. 
That's true. Really, shouldn't they put him out of his misery instead would, of letting him become a zombie? I would think so. Yeah. It's going to be bad. It, I'll keep waiting for one of these guys that gets killed to come back like into their camp at some right. point as a zombie. Right. Just, just to go like, hey, you should have taken me out. Right. But... Why don't they? They're just allowing another walker to be created. I mean, granted, there are a lot of walkers, so the odds of them coming back... Still. Yeah, I know. Still, at least you think one of them would show up, just, right. for, just for dramatic effect alone. Right. But what they're doing is they're allowing the herd to become bigger, and they're prolonging this right. person's agony. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. just kill them. Just a quick, yeah, slice of the katana. They're in pain already. Yep. Totally yeah. agree. So, uh, Glenn and Nicholas end up getting trapped atop a dumpster, and here's where it all goes to hell. And Twitter starts burning with hatred. But, uh, yeah, they end up getting surrounded by a walker herd. Things do not look good. Mm. So, yeah, Glenn and Nicholas on top of the dumpster, picture this. Um, a barbed you probably, wire fence. This, this is a big deal. Yeah, so it's been all over the internet. So I can't see him spoiling this because no, you, that's that's what our whole thing is. If you haven't had it spoiled, exactly right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, it's gonna happen. Sorry. Right. So uh, seeing no way out, Nicholas thanks Glenn, thank you, and then kills himself. But he doesn't just kill himself and take himself out. In the process of falling off the dumpster, he knocks Glenn off of the dumpster. I'm so angry. And they, both of them fall into the uh, uh, swarm of, of zombies, the, the walker herd, mm -hmm. where Glenn is seemingly eaten alive. Yeah, so you say. So I say. And what you're going to say now is that he's not the one being eaten and he's yep. going to crawl under the dumpster. Or something. Or something. That's the theory that other people have. Right. I get it. Right. Uh, but they're not hesitant to kill people off. Nope. They're not. That thing uh -huh. was pretty carefully edited. I agree. So there's... So you think he's still alive? Yes. My theory is that, yes, he's still alive. Well, I'm going to find out tomorrow. We'll both find out tomorrow. Right. But, um, I'm okay if he we're, is. Because we're recording gonna... on the Saturday before, for those who are wondering. Right. But, but uh, I think that was very deliberately edited to make it look like Glenn was getting eaten. I'm not going to get my hopes up. So there's but more. I can't story. even with Nicholas. Now feel That's free. I'm now if I'm wrong, feel free to just say ah, no, no, I told no. you so. But no, I think the internet is like half and half. Yeah. With it, yep. uh, I watched the Talking Dead mm -hmm. afterwards, and um, they were not optimistic. They, well, but they were also deliberately ambiguous. Right, they were. Uh, but they don't know. They, well, no, but they had this like note from what is it, Gimple or something? Scott Gimple, mm -hmm. uh, the showrunner, who wrote this very ambiguous statement. Right. You'll about, see him again. Yes. At least that, yes. parts of him. Yeah, or, or you know, he may not be what he was, or you know, something like like. Uh, you know, this won't be the last time you see Glenn, but right. you know, it's possible. He said it's possible he may not be. Now, this is the key word, possible, that he may not be what he was. So basically right. saying, well, he could be a zombie. That's just clever right. language. It's semantics. Right. Or he could just come back as Glenn. Yeah, or he could just come back as Glenn. Everything's okay. Right. But he's not going to emphasize that point. And of course he's going to be different because he just saw somebody kill himself in and front of him. And he got pushed down in... To a big herd of zombies. And the other big point, you know, pro Glenn staying alive is that there was no memoriam for Glenn during the Talking Dead. Yeah, I get that. Now, granted, if you're trying to keep it secret for next week, you're not going to have one. I, right. I get that. But right. generally, they would there's have no, it. they would have the memoriam for Glenn. Right. Because but, you see him getting his guts ripped out, supposedly. Right. So. Well, it's not. He's already dead by this point, presumably. Chris Hardwick said that he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. in advance and since that's they crap no he doesn't no. he said he doesn't know he's lying i i highly doubt they tell him anything because i don't think he could keep it a secret <laughs> <laughs> i really don't he i am not, not I, have a good poker face maybe that's me being cynical here but i don't i think he's in on it and he's he, there to deliberately keep the secret and keep it ambiguous all right so whatever you say i'm just I'm being cynical, you know, like, we'll see if I'm right. I could be totally wrong, but okay. I don't think I am on this one. He seemed pretty gutted about it. 
Yeah. So I think the smart money is on Glenn being alive. We'll find out if I'm right. Okay. Well, they haven't done the eeny, meeny, my new mo yet, and they have hinted at that right. scene anyway. So. And there have been rumors of Glenn's death. Right. To be for a while now. Right. But if you read the comics, Glenn is supposed to be, you know, killed by a big bad named Nagin. Right. With the eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Catch but, a tiger by the tail. Yeah, yeah. So Nagin hasn't even been introduced yet. Right. So that right there might be a selling point for Glenn also still being alive. Right. Because right. I got to think Glenn, if Glenn is going to die, he's going to die in front of Maggie. Right. He's Instead not, of it just being, hey, where, why yeah. is he not back? Oh, where's Glenn? And then Maggie right. breaks down because everybody in her family is now dead. Except she wouldn't know. Right. She would never find out what happened to him. Well, no. That just Well, that's true. But, I mean, he doesn't come back, so she might think he's dead. Right. Do you think oh. that would really happen? Do you think that they would do it that way? No. no. That he just wouldn't come back? No. So it's, it, it, they there's another point. Dramatic. Yeah, exactly. So I can't see them doing that. That would, okay. that would be a waste. Okay. If Glenn is going right. to die eventually, he's going so to So we'll see probably. tomorrow. But I'm just so angry yes. right now with Nicholas. <laughs> yeah. Ungrateful. After all Glenn has done for him. No, I think he was just stupid because... No, no, no. I, I get that. I'm just yeah. saying Glenn has done so many things for him. <laughs> he stood up for him when right. he shouldn't have. and Because Nicholas did try to kill Glenn originally. Yeah. So now right. he actually killed him for real. Right. By taking himself off the board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So for those of you, you know, like out there, uh, all over Tumblr and what have you that are just raging, uh, just take a deep breath and let's hope for the best for Glenn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I get yeah. that. But okay. still, I'm just like, I was like, no. Oh, my Lori, my wife was just in like, cause Glenn, she's Glenn's one of those people where Lori has said, well, if they kill off Glenn, I'm going to stop watching. No, no, no. I'm, he's going to die at some point. That was just no, bad. I know that, but yeah. I mean, that, that was not the way for Glenn to go. There's, if Glenn has been around since season one, there's no way he's going to check out by that. Like something that lame. That was just horrible. Yeah. You know, oh, hey, someone's going to knock into you and yep. push oh. you off a dumpster. Yep. That, no. That's like you're not going to get the big prices right fail for Glenn. I'm sorry. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> I pushed the button. I know. You got to be quicker on the draw, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. No, I pushed it I, and it was just like. Well, the machine's got to be quicker on the draw. Nope. Nope. Denied. Yeah. Oh, well. But yeah, that's not going to happen. All so right. I would hope that he's still alive. You're making a good case for the fact that he's still alive. Thank so, you. Okay. So Absolutely. move on. So I pled my case and we're going to move on. Yeah. Okay. Rick, so what about Rick? Rick. Rick has an injured hand. It's kind of interesting because in the comics, of course, he's lost his hand a long time ago. Right. Now, I've heard stuff about... Th- this uh people have been scratched and gotten all kinds of cuts and right. had blood in them before without a problem they're already infected right all of them are already infected so, so really the only thing it would do it would be a walker bite right or yeah so and we as far really, as we know just we, a walker bite as far as we know he wasn't bitten right he wasn't it was just so, a cut with blood in it yeah so i don't think this is going to be the thing that makes no. him take off part of his arm no uh not yet at least i think they're just trying to tease you and like hey oh shadowing yeah rick yeah no it could happen still but sure yeah and uh i love how he was all yeah bamf on the wolves but again thinking production wise i gotta think they don't want to add rick's missing hand to their budget because of having to cgi out everything and make yeah. it look like and they got, would have to CGI it out, and it, or you know, make Andrew Lincoln have to wear the stumpy arm in certain scenes, or have him cut his arm off. So yeah, because you know, yeah, yeah. So I don't see that happening. He's a method, isn't he? Yes, he is. A, I mean, yeah, he's he's a method actor. So just cut it off. <laughs> Keep it in ice, and at yeah. some point, try. I'll, and... get, I'll get it stitched on after the show. Sure. <laughs> after I leave. <laughs> Sure. Why not? Cryogenically freeze that arm. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see that? Well, Rick cuts off his hand in season seven. So if you could just cut yeah. it off at that point. Right. Is that a deal yeah. breaker for you? Nah, it's all right. I could do that. <laughs> so anyway, Rick ends up uh, reaching this RV 
And what is it with The Walking Dead and RVs? I don't know. But apparently RVs are about the worst thing you could be in. They're in, death in, traps. In, in a zombie apocalypse. Yeah. So if you're ever, yeah, just stay away from RVs. They're bad luck. Death traps. Um, all respect to, um, oh, what's his name? Dale. Dale, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, uh, you know, the I RVs. I love Dale. Yeah. Uh, so he tries I was to. Bad when he died for sure. So he's got got his injured hand, and he's trying to coordinate these plans with Walkie Talkie by Walkie Talkie with Daryl, Sasha, and Abraham, as well as Glenn and Tobin. Although those two don't respond, Glenn, mm-hmm. we know why. Mm-hmm. Um, but all of a sudden, and this is a really cool moment, Rick gets ambushed by the wolves. They just like they pile into the RV. Mm-hmm. And now they're leaving Alexandria, right? Yes. Yes. Right. They're, they're basically Rick's getting closer to Alexandria. The wolves are coming out of Alexandria. So again, we're interweaving right storylines. Right. And so they're converging at this point. Yep. So and, this is when and this is one of the wolves that you know the Morgan let go mm-hmm. with the gun. Right. So Carl's just about to take the the casserole out of the oven. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's coordinate everything. Yeah. The, right. The oven hasn't gone ding yet. Uh, right. But uh, so Rick, um, as if he hasn't had enough to deal with today, has to kill these guys. So he kills these guys and ends up finding Judas baby food in one of their pockets. Mm -hmm. So he's like, oh, crap. And he realizes that the wolves came from Alexandria. Right. And he knows there's some S that has gone down. So he tries to start up the old RV and it won't start. Ring, 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 ring. And then, of course, out of the woods comes what? Walkers. Walkers. Yep. So they surround the RV and they do this kind of shot that is very reminiscent of when Rick was surrounded in season one when he climbed inside the tank. Yep. I mean, it was kind of like an overhead shot. Yeah. And they're all like, yep. So, so, but, and that, of course, was when Glenn calls Came in and rescued him. Basically said, hey, dumbass. Right. And he said, hey, dumbass, in this so, one, too. So, we're, maybe we're kind of bringing that full circle with Glenn. Are we? Do you I think don't know. Glenn's going to come and save him? I don't know, but it's mm-hmm. interesting. So, anyway, I just thought it was kind of an interesting comparison to see. Yeah, a mirror. Yep. So, mm-hmm. that's all I got for that, unless you got to have something. Not a tank. Um, no, I don't think I have anything else. Yeah, it's not going to hold up as well. <laughs> Let's put it that way. No. They're going to have to airlift him out. So. Michonne was pretty cool, though. Mm-hmm. No, she's um, always cool. With her sword slicing off heads. And one of the things I was thinking about is how do they do that? The the walker is actually walking. Yes. And then she's slicing off heads and they go flying off. CGI sword. CGI, is it? CGI head. Is it really? I think, yep. Okay. Because that's awesome. I, how I, 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 got, I have to think that's how they yeah. do it. It's they probably give her a handle with a sword and, and then she, they kind of CGI the sword on top of it. So it looks like it's going through his head. I'm guessing. That's amazing. Yeah, However they do it. However they do it. I don't know. I'm, so I could be wrong. But yeah. I think that would be. And cool. you know what broke my heart the most is. On top um, of Glenn. Okay. Other than Glenn. Other than Glenn. Was, um, was it Scott who wrote the note to his wife? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Scott, whoever yeah. it was that wrote the note to his wife. And right. As he's dying against the fence, the note just gets lost there. Yeah, that was very tragic. Oh, man, I was so upset. If you read, it was one of those, if you read this, I'm dead kind of notes. And, of course, and, it never gets delivered. Um, what was the thing she rubbed off on her arm? She, she had something written on her arm. I don't know. I don't know what that was. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I kind of missed that one. So, yeah, I was wondering about that, too. It was there I was something a, written there. I just don't remember what I it was. I made a note to look it up, and I totally forgot about it. So mm-hmm. I failed on that one, guys. Sorry. Hopefully, mm-hmm. some of you out there caught that, figured it out. Um, so, what did you give this episode? I gave it nine ungrateful suicidal a holes. <laughs> who? Gee, who could you be talking about? I don't know. Yeah, I gave this one nine out of ten trash dumpsters. Yeah, it's a nine. Yep, so we're pretty in sync on this one. It was really good. Solid nine from both of us. Mm -hmm. It was a good episode. Great episode. Mm -hmm. All right, Gotham. Yep. This was an interesting episode, too. Mm -hmm. Um, By Fire. 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 Old 60s song, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Written by Rebecca Perry Cutter, Cutter and directed by T.J. Scott. 
And uh, we say goodbye to a recurring character in this one as well, maybe. But uh, yeah, I'm guessing so. Yeah, I think she. Yeah. I so, so. Uh, so we have. Um, do you have any quick thoughts in this one, or, or just go ahead and run through it? No, it's your turn to drive the bus this okay. week. Okay. All right. So we've got uh, Butch going to Theo for a job, missing his l- hand that Penguin cut off last week. That's right. Uh, he's there. Stumpy. Yeah, he's supposedly going in there as a Trojan horse to go look for uh, Penguin's mother, Gertrude. Except people aren't going to spill out of him. Yes, that we know of. I that mean, we it, know of. He's kind of a big guy. Maybe he's got it, a couple it's of. It's true. Yeah. He could have like a couple of small people in there, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Kids, maybe. But uh, so Theo's naturally skeptical. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I don't know about this. Yeah. Uh, he brings in uh, Tabitha and, and Barbara and Barbara, mm-hmm. crazy Barbara, yeah. and basically wants their opinion about Butch. Tabitha, he can attach things to a stump. Yeah. <laughs> Tabitha thinks he's cute. And and then Barbara's like, well, you know, he's kind of a dick to me. Yeah. He tried but, to kill me. But then they both are like, yeah, we could we could put like a chainsaw on his hand. Wouldn't that be cool? Ash. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure, <laughs> yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure that's what they were thinking yeah. when they wrote that. But Night the writers. Dead. Yep. But uh, yeah, the, the Evil Dead. Yeah, totally. So Theo's like. Oh, sorry. Evil Dead. Yeah, Evil Dead. So Theo's like, well, okay, let's let's see how this goes. Oh, Theo knew exactly what was happening. Right. You know? But he's playing Butch. Yeah. He, he's Yeah, he's fully cognizant. Right. Of what Butch is up to. And, it's, and I think he knew what was going on with Butch as well. Although he does seem impressed at the fact that Butch's hand is missing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice little bloody stump. Yes. So. I think he knew the entire story, too. Um, I think he knew that Zaz had conditioned him. Right. Already. I think he knew the whole thing. So he's ready for him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to make my thoughts clear on this. This is something that Jeff and I talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, the twitching. Okay. Is something that he does when he's doing something against his conditioning. Right. Uh, so he does it when he's at Theo's place, mm-hmm. which is against his conditioning, but he's doing it for Penguin. When he's trying to like lay the lame story on Theo. Right. Now, when he goes back to Penguin afterwards, right, and he is, uh, you know essentially telling him to go into this thing to Mm -hmm. get his mother back. No twitches. Yes. Nothing. He's calm. He's cool, collected. Theo has reconditioned him. Yeah. So I think that's a big tell. Right. And I think that's good writing. Yes. So at least that's... Because you have to at least be observant of what's going on. Right. 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 And that's... I I give full credit to Jeff for that, but we discussed it. (laughs) And uh, it was... I think it's really smart of them. And when this episode's called By Fire, um, when he's talking to Penguin and Penguin's getting mad and he's, you know, he's got the guns and everything going, there's a fireplace roaring behind him Mm -hmm. in the scene. And I just love that that they keep the theme of fire through the whole episode. It's so great. Well, and obviously By Fire is a play on words from Trial By Fire. Right. Trial by fire. Yep. Um, there's other ones too. I get um, baptism by fire. Right, exactly. Um, all kinds of by fires. So, so yeah, basically, yeah. it's a proving ground, mm-hmm. essentially. So we've got Alfred Blends by fire. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, we've got Alfred uh, still hitting kids, apparently. Right. <laughs> what is the deal with him? But to be fair, this is yeah. Boxing. No, this this one's okay. This one makes it because he's. Wearing, I'm being facetious. They're both wearing boxing gloves, but it does seem right. like I oh, know two weeks this, in a row, and he's two weeks in a row. He's, he's beating the crap out of kids, but right? What, what is up with that? He's not playing fair either. But, no, but again, but the the bad guys aren't going to play fair, right? So right. so Alfred's prepping him for that. But yeah, so Alfred's I just, giving. I thought it was funny. I'm glad you said it that way because <laughs> I thought the same thing as I'm like, dude. Yep. Stop hitting kids. What's the deal with the child abuse two weeks in a row? What's up with that, Gotham Writers? Right. No, what's up with that, Alfred? <laughs> yeah. Pretty, well, the writers are writing Alfred. Oh, I know. I, I know. But uh, yeah, so Alfred is giving boxing lessons to Master Bruce. Mm-hmm. And. 
So this is the first time that Bruce is physically training for his future, mm -hmm. which was great to see. It was. And I love that. I want to see more of that. Him. Yeah, go ahead. No, I love that he's teaching him to play dirty. Right. Where, you know, he he <laughs> says something about silver. Yes. And Bruce looks all goofy like. And then he, he sucker punches him. Like little hearts pop out of his head. Ooh, silver, St. Cloud, tweet, tweet, right. tweet. And then and all then, of a sudden, bam, <laughs> knocks him on his ass. Right. And then just a second later, because he's teaching him this lesson, he bites Alfred. <laughs> and I'm like, good for you, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce good didn't, job. he played dirty as well. So. Yeah. And Alfred, I think, respected that. He did. He said, good job. And yep. Yep. yeah. You need to do that. And I also like that they mentioned Lucius and that the computer was there getting fixed. And it's kind of realistic that it's still getting fixed because right. Alfred really did a number on it. This is true. I can see it still being fixed. So kudos for continuity, guys. Right. All right. Just don't let Alfred hit any more kids. That's all I'm asking. Yeah. Can we stay away from silver? This, this does not need to be a meme, okay? That's right. <laughs> The yes. Alfred hitting kids meme. We don't. There need is that. the Batman hitting Robin meme already. So yes, let's not... the, slap, the slap. <laughs> let's not do the Alfred yeah. hitting kids. Right. Thing. Yeah. Um, Silver, are you luring him into a trap? Whack. <laughs> whack. <laughs> right. I thought he told you to stop hitting kids. Whack. Whack. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So after uh, Selena and Bridget end up robbing the slave auction. Mm -hmm. There's like there's like a nice little um, human trafficking thing going. Right. Now, this is so Selena can help right. Bridget get away. Yeah, basically Bridget. Yeah, Bridget needs money. Right. So they decide to hit this thing. Right. And that's because Selena knows she can't make it on the streets. Right. But Selena knows she can she can rob these guys and stay hidden on the fringes of society. Uh, but yeah. Bridget can't. Right. And while they're there hitting the slave auction, Bridget sees these girls in a cage and wants to help them. But Selena's like, no, we got to get going. Right. On and own. it's probably <laughs> smart on Selena's part. Right. Because stealing money is one thing, but taking away their livelihood is a completely different thing. Um, I mean, it's not great, but Selena knows where to draw the line, you know. Yeah. She dances on the fringe already. But Bridget's obviously not down with this. It's Firefly. Yeah. No, she's she's ready to go help them. Well, uh, seems, that's a, seems that's a more, sore spot for her. Seems like a bit more noble than uh, Selena is right now. But she feels like she knows what those girls are going through. Right. She's sympathetic. Right. Because yep. she's been there, mm -hmm. essentially, you know, in a yep. cage for all of her life. Right. And uh, I like that when they go to leave... Uh, for the first time, I think uh, Selena is actually seeing what's happening through Bridget's eyes. Right. A different perspective. Right. And mm -hmm. she says, you all suck. <laughs> <laughs> and she's taking their money and she runs out. And I thought to myself, you know, good for you. <laughs> Seriously, good for you. So Bridget gets her money. Uh, she's ready to get on this bus or something out of town. When all of a sudden, who shows up but her brothers, the Pikes? Yep, yep. And they drag yep, her and th throw her into a van and drive off. Mm hmm. Drive Ooh, her back money. Yeah, drive her back to the hideout, take her money. Mm hmm. So even like the dickitude level is super high in this one. They are the worst. And then it gets even worse because they start throwing firecrackers at her. I know. What's up with that? So they're yeah. just like, you know, like trying like, really close to her face and just totally messing with her. And They're yeah. serial killers is what yeah. they are. Yep. That is. So they're the sadists more like. Yeah. But yeah. Terrible. Yep. What other so, things have they done to her? And so, I hate to bring that up, but seriously, what other things do you we think? Don't, yeah. Done? Well, this is, this is a uh, network show, so I don't right. think it's going to get any worse, but. If you it was, can't help but think it, right? If this was on HBO, probably a lot worse. Yeah. So let's put it that way. Right. And uh, so Bridget finally snaps. Right. And she ends up murdering the other, her brothers. Right. Which I. Gets the old uh, flamethrower and is like, flame on. Yeah. I, I had a hard time not. No. You pumping my fist. You have to root for Firefly in this one. Right. Because she cooked her brothers, the evil right. sadists. But uh, so she ends up going, doing her, breaking out on her own. 
we go back to Theo, uh, who finds Butch watching closed circuit TV, and he's watching Gertrude, of course. But it, Butch like lamely covers it up, like no, 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 I was just uh, waiting for you. Yeah, twitch, 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 twitch. Sweat. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sweat pouring down his brow. You're right. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, mind you, that was the same footage we saw last week. Yes. The exact same footage of her. So maybe it's a recording. Ooh. Yeah, it is a recording. I know. But... Since it's the exact same footage. Um, and I yeah. think that they're telegraphing that. She's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Or that he just knows that he doesn't need to show her actually there. Right. Whatever the dealio is. Yeah. We'll find out. There's, right. m- there's more to this story, I'm sure. Right. Uh, so uh, Theo tells Tabitha to unbrainwash Butch. Mm-hmm. She breaks out the old bull whip. Yep. Gets ready to have at him. Yep. Whip versus hammer. Whip's gonna <laughs> win. Yeah, because by now, uh, yeah, Butch, we find out they didn't put a chainsaw on him. They put a lame hammer. Yeah. <laughs> so it's hammer, ti- it's hammer time. Rock, paper, scissors, hammer, <laughs> whip. Hammer, hammer wins. <laughs> no, whip wins. Well, Sorry. Yep. Apparently, whip wins. Yeah. Um, I think whip wins over all that other stuff. <laughs> So Firefly goes back to that slave auction because it's still bugging her in her head, I'm sure. Sure. To, f- to free those girls. Yeah. Selena ends up tipping off Gordon to where Firefly is with the yeah. making him promise, like, she's going to be okay, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to do – well, yeah. to be to Gordon's credit, he goes, I'm going to do my best. Right. right. But apparently that's not good enough for Selena. She's in, Selena is an absolute black or white, you know, yes, no – there's no gray area with Selena, apparently. Well, there's a gray area on her end. Yes, but it's just, what she expects from everybody else. Right, right. At this point. She expects an answer. She demands. Yeah. It's like, if I get this promise, you're going to hold up to it. Otherwise, you know, death stare. Right. Yeah. Right. But she's gray. Yes. I mean. She gets to be gray, but nobody else gets to be gray. Right, yeah, right. Got it. So the strike force shows up, and you've got one little twitchy cop uh fires off a bullet ruptures the fuel line and the flamethrower which automatically you know where this is going yep and firefly ends up like getting a little uh you know understandably a little touchy with the reaction she torches a car in front of her but in the process she sets herself on fire fire flame flame on that's right and she does flame on who ordered the extra crispy yeah don't and the screaming Yes. It wasn't pleasant. No, it wasn't. Pretty horrific. Yeah, it was. So uh, kudos to Michelle Ventimiglia, who plays... Oh, she did such a great job. She did a good job. Yeah. So uh, Theo tells young Bruce, he has him over for dinner, and to kind of like, hey, my niece, here's my niece, you know, come on over and let me lull you into my fold. So he's totally working the niece angle to get close to Bruce. Right. And it's working pretty well. Yeah, it is. So he tells uh, Bruce, he pulls him aside, says, uh, Sid Bunderslaw's missing. Wait, wait, wait. You're skipping over a whole thing here. What did I skip over? Tell okay, me. well, they're sitting down at the Saturday evening post-dinner table. Okay. Complete Technicolor dinner table. Mm-hmm. And um, Tabitha comes and sits down with blood on her face. Oh, fresh yeah. Fresh from whipping Butch. Right. Okay, and then there's a toast to family. Right, I right about in that. front of. <laughs> yeah, and nobody, bat, nobody bats an eye. Bruce, yes. Oh, he does it on purpose. Yeah, yeah. He's he's doing it yes. to to yeah. show Bruce how alone he is. Mm-hmm. And and then he goes, oh well, I hope you'll think of us as your family. Yeah, it's a total power trip. Yes. Power, power move. It is completely. Right. And I thought that scene was such a chess game. For, I mean, he is messing with Bruce's head. He's, to mind, the he's mind effing. Right. Bruce, big time. And then Tabitha was doing the whole, oh, they're so cute. They know they're cute. Mm-hmm. You know, Tabitha was doing yes. that whole thing um, with, you know, putting them together. and Right. Uh, and of course, they were playing up the brother sister angle. Completely, Tabitha and, yeah. and Theo in front of. Then he takes Bruce aside, sitting him by the fire. 
fire, again a theme mm-hmm. yep yep and telling him oh bunderslaw went missing mm-hmm. i can and, help you he was yeah. a bad guy yeah i'll help clean up the corruption at wayne yeah. enterprises yeah let me in yeah let me do that yeah, yeah. wink wink nudge nudge say i'll no. huff and puff and blow your house <laughs> right exactly mm-hmm so yeah, so uh, Butch. Says, Hi, grandmother. What big eyes you have! This is a big Butch episode because Butch goes back to Penguin, uh, now apparently reconditioned, re 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 reconditioned. Yeah, I think definitely. Don't you think? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Um, or because for one thing, I mean, it's almost back to his natural state because mm-hmm. he was anti Penguin because he Penguin killed fish. Right. Threw right. off the building. Mm-hmm. So. So I got to think, yeah, now Butch is going to be looking for payback on that scale. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, he says he found the uh, location of Penguin's mother. Penguin rallies up his gang. Say, like, okay, let's get oh, him. He's livid. Yeah. He is just raring to go. Yes. It's on. Yeah, it is really on. It's and again, the-, the fire behind him. Mm-hmm. And he, he is crazed. He gets all of his lieutenants. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he's got all the firepower. He does the, you know, the yep. with the rifle, everything. Mount him up. <laughs> yeah, let's, and it. Let's ride. This is the thing: is it's his mother is his weak spot, and yep. Theo is using that to his advantage, and totally. so he's just he's just going to barrel in without thinking about it. Yep. And whoops! It's not going to go well. No, it's not. Just when Penguin got his groove back, but yeah, he's going to lose. It. I have to say, mm-hmm. um, he's definitely not going to bite it because no. Penguin lives. No. But I'm guessing that now Penguin is going to go after Theo and he's going to have a big part in outing Theo at some point. Oh, I'm sure. Um, I, I think Theo's going to be the big bad through this whole season. But I think at some point, Theo is going to turn from everyone thinks I'm good to I got to hide because oh, not yeah. everyone thinks I'm good. Well, it's probably going to be Gordon working with Penguin right. to bring Theo down. Right. Um, but when that is, I don't know. I think it's going to start with Penguin going into this place and getting ambushed. Yeah, he's going to start there. It's going to suck for Penguin for a little bit. Right. And then he's going to have to come back out and like, okay, Theo, it's on. Let's and then go. the campaign is going to start for Penguin to tear down Theo. Maybe Penguin will run for mayor. Oh, God. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, you know, Danny DeVito did it. <laughs> I know. I know. Mayor Cobblepot. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. But, uh, Wouldn't that be hilarious, though, if they did that angle? It would be hilarious. Mayor, mayor Cobblepot. Yeah. I mean, they are bringing back Paul Rubens as Penguin's father. I know, I know they are. So they could be going that Batman Returns route. You never know. So we'll see. Uh, okay, so now it, this is where we get a little serious mm-hmm. uh, with Nigma, Edward Nigma, having a nice little dinner with uh, Kristen Kringle. Mm-hmm. Has her over back to over to his place again. Oh. But for some reason. Edward admits to Kristen that he murdered Officer Doherty. It's not for some reason. Well, she she talks about how she's worried that Doherty's going to come back and get her someday. Not and just like, that, but she has that conversation with, with Lee. Yes, about and, how she wants him to be edgier. Right. She needs a more alpha guy. Yeah. yeah. So he tries to be more alpha. And she knows he's hiding something, and she wishes he'd just come out and tell her what it is. Mm-hmm. So she's inviting all this. Yeah, it's not the best move, wisest move on her part. But. No. So, yeah, Nigma tells her this. He's like, mm-hmm. okay, well, you know, I was the one who killed him. Really? No, I don't believe you. And he pulls out, like, this badge. His badge. And it's like, see? And I was yelling at the screen. Now, I know we needed this to happen for him to become the Riddler. It was going to happen eventually. But, but I like his character, and I'm like, dude, you just sealed the deal. So, for you, all of... You didn't yeah, need to I do know. this. Yeah, this is after he gets sex. I know, right? Was like, I mean, the porn music was playing. It was all good. Right. But, but It was like this in the house. Yeah. Right? Riddler was getting some action. It was all good. Right. They were just waking up. She was in that sexy slip. And he's like, riddle me this, baby. <laughs> and he tells her. And I'm like, no. <laughs> yep. So for all those people shipping the Riddler and Kristen Kringle... It's over. 
Yeah, and he was not happy. He didn't mean to do anything. Nig Nig Brindle or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> is over. Nigmal? Nig Nig yeah, something like Nigmal. that. Or um and the thing is, he's literally saying I will never hurt you Edston. while he's strangling I don't know if it's her. <laughs> Edston? Edston. Okay, Edston. Edston, yeah. Um, literally saying I will never hurt you while he's strangling her to death. Yes. So he can, yeah, he's like, I'm not going to hurt you, I'm not going to hurt And then, of course, he strangles her. She's right. Dead. As so, he's saying it. So he does, and then he breaks out in the Darth Vader, no! Yeah. And I was saying it too, because yeah. I did like them together, but... Mm. Yeah. Wow. And I like I liked Chelsea Spack as Kristen Kringle. Yep. But but whoops. Yep. Sorry. Oh well. So now maybe we can like get him down that dark road. Yeah. Uh, so last thing I have is that uh, we kind of follow up with Firefly, who we thought was dead, mm -hmm. but turns out not dead. No. She gets. I'm not real... dead yet. I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Just resting. <laughs> That's right. Be quiet. <laughs> You're I'm dead. Fe I'm feeling better. I'm feeling better. <laughs> Yeah. I uh, could go for a walk. So these orderlies are wheeling her yeah. down this hallway. Now, I was doing freeze frames on all these rooms. Mm -hmm. Did you do freeze frames on them? No, but I got the, you know, this is the Indian Hill division of Wayne Enterprises. Dun, dun, right. dun. Yep, that's right. Now, the only one that I could uh, freeze frame on and get maybe a hint as to who it was down there yep. was there was a lizard hand coming oh, you mean like, up. Like Killer Croc? Killer Croc. Ooh, that'd be good. Waylon, yeah. Waylon Jones. Right. Now, the next one was a woman in black leather and she had kind of auburny hair and she had like um, leads all over her. Hmm. I couldn't understand who that might be. Yeah. Because uh, we have Ivy and right. a grown up Ivy wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, and the next one was, oh, uh, the next one was a guy all in bandages and he was like this in, in the bandages. And I thought, well, <laughs> for those who can't see this at home, it's, it's oh, like Karen, a mannequin, Karen's like a, hung up, like hung up. Oh, sorry. Like yeah. a, um, we have to describe uh, marionette. Oh, okay. There you like go. Like a marionette. Right. Um, so, and I was thinking perhaps Solomon Grundy, maybe because he was engineered I don't know. We'll find bit. out. Yeah. So there's stuff like that going. And they've cast uh, Mr. Freeze. Yeah, they've cast Mr. Freeze. So uh, he could and, be and, a professor down there. A well, doctor. doctor. Uh, yeah, they cast Nathan Darrow as Mr. Freeze. That was good. And then, but here's the big thing, though. They they announced the casting, and I put this on Damn Good Coffee and Hot. It's yeah. Plug, um, <laughs> that B.D. Wong has been cast as Professor Hugo Strange. Right. Who is in charge of this whole thing division mm -hmm. and they're apparently uh performing experiments on superpower beings they're they're basically uh experimenting with them trying to develop them i'm guessing right something to that effect right so and now with indian hill we have the um the potential for engineered super yes. villains and superheroes so yes we might get so yes we might get villains like killer croc right who actually is a more of a mutant Right. But still. And then also the supervillains that are like creators, like the doll maker could yep. come back. Um, we could get villains like Dr. Phosphorus. Right. Exactly. See what I'm going with there? Right. And of course, Freeze, because he's been cast. Nora yep. Freeze as well. Right. Um, you know, we could get all those kind of uh, professory sort of evil. Well, sort of, but also, yeah. You know, that kind of goodness down there but we're getting superpowers by the by right the, right right we're not just getting gangsters right so or, or i thought uses. that was great and also this is another thing that of course you know it's owned by wayne industries because it sits underneath arkham asylum right um and now arkham asylum is still kind of a shell yes because batman is the one who rehabs it yeah um but this is i think going to be a sticking point at some point for selena because she already hates Bruce for owning Arkham Asylum uh, later on, of right. course. Uh, but now her her friend, Bridget, yeah. is going to end up coming out of there. Yeah. Now, you did so, catch uh, that the those orderlies, they say that uh, Bridget's suit melted to her skin. 
Right. So and now, now she's fireproof. Right. So Firefly. Firefly. Yeah. So like she literally does, Firefly. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and at some point she's going to find out that she's been taken there mm-hmm. and that Bruce owns it. Right. And that's going to be. A that's big not going to go well. Yeah. No, right. Yeah. So another so, reason but, to. So another reason for Selena to be pissed off at Bruce. Right. right. Because that's all she is these days is pissed off at Bruce. At everyone. Yeah. I don't think she's terribly pissed off at him. She has some anger issues. It's more with Alfred right now. Well, understandably, because Alfred clocked her pretty good. So that's justified. Right? That's kind of justified as far as I'm concerned. I think I would have told Bruce. Yeah. your butler smacked me me hard. (laughs) Yeah. I'm kind of surprised that, uh, yeah, at least Selena didn't try to turn Alfred against Bruce, or Bruce against Alfred at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. that makes her the bigger person, which is kind of cool. So ratings. I gave it eight and a half hammer hands because I did like this episode. And while it felt like it was a setup episode, it also kind of tied up a few ends, too. It was very entertaining, this episode. I was, Mm -hmm. you know, solid outing, uh, especially for Gotham, solid outing. And I like that it carried a theme through the whole episode, too. I gave this one eight out of ten firecrackers. Very nice. So... The firecrackers were just sadistic. That was messed up. So yeah, yeah that, that's that was wide. messed up. So that's why I had to pick them. <laughs> right. That shows you how twisted I am, I guess. Yeah. Um. Okay. New show, Supergirl. Yay! It's been a long wait, but we yeah. finally have the pilot, and I think they kind of tweaked it just a little bit. Yeah, they they kind of tightened it up. They removed some dialogue and they tightened a couple scenes. I think they got a little bit of rid of some of the dorky dorkiness with um with uh Will. Well, no, not with Will, but with Kara. A little bit. A little bit. There were a few of Will's lines that were yeah, cut. Yeah, yeah, no, I didn't miss. So, whatever they did, it seemed to flow better. Okay. And a few background. Yeah, and I think they set up a little bit with the end with um we'll get into that, but yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, this is um, written by... Astra? Is that who you're talking about? A- Astra, yeah. 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 Uh, Aunt Astra. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, this is by Greg Berlanti, Ali Adler, and Andrew Kreisberg, the story. Uh, teleplay by Ali and Adler. Directed by Glenn Winter. Can I just say how much I love Ali Adler? Uh, how much do you love Ali Adler? A lot. She was one of the best writers on Chuck. Oh, is that where she's from? Yeah, um, she wrote a lot of the romantic episodes of Chuck. Mm -hmm. And she had a good balance of suspense and romance. Okay. Um, And I really enjoyed that, that she didn't take away from the the danger Mm -hmm. of the show to make the romance part happen as well. And, and you I thought really that it carried that. over nicely to this show. Yeah. Okay. I do. Uh, I think it's gonna. I think it's really great that she's part of this show. Okay. Because she writes strong women. So. So you, so you see her not writing just the pilot. Then you see her writing. More she's a episodes. co-creator. Oh, okay. Well, then never mind. So she she'll write the, the big. Showrunners. She'll probably write the bigger episodes. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing. Yep. She's one of the showrunners. So. Okay, so we start off getting the origin of Supergirl. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is essentially an origin episode. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kara, of course, if you don't know the story by now, uh, Kara is sent to Earth by her mother Allura. not not her father, which I thought was kind of interesting. We don't well, see. He was so- there though. Yeah, but. They didn't play up Zor-El at all. No. Zor-El's just kind of there. Right. I mean, it's Jor-El's brother. <laughs> I know. He's a scientist, too. Yeah. But Well, you know the reason they did that, though, yeah, because of what happens at the end of the episode. Right, so, right. Yeah. So, anyway, so she sent there to protect her baby cousin, Kal-El, mm-hmm. as Krypton destructs. Blows up real good. Yeah. yeah you, know that. you know that story. Well, of course... Uh, the explosion sends Kara's ship off course and into the fandom zone. Oh, I mean the phantom zone. Right. I had a hard time discussing this in yes. the Supergirl podcast because I had to keep going. Yes. Phantom, phantom zone. Not, not fandom. Right. So uh, You'll be yeah. happy to know I had to really. So work. she's stepping into the phantom zone. Right. Exactly. Um, where she stayed for 24 years before landing on Earth. That's right. So, if you're following this, this means kal El's now an adult mm-hmm. when, when Kara lands. Uh, well so, into yeah. his adult. Yeah, her baby cousin is now an adult older than her. Right. So, now he's Superman, of course, by now. So, he puts uh, Kara in charge of the Danvers, 
which was a lovely cameo by Dean Kane, former Superman Dean Kane, and former Supergirl Helen Slater. Yes, and we won't discuss that Supergirl, but but uh, I think it's okay. But okay, it's not great, but it's, it's okay. It's not great, but Lois I, and Clark was great. Yeah, the first two seasons, seasons three and four, not so much. Eating of the frogs was no, just jumping once, of the once, shark. Th- that's when that show jumped the shark. Was the whole frog clone? Yes. Thing. I agree. Trust me. But I love the first two seasons. Let's put Yeah, that. me too. This is great. Uh, yeah. Tracy Scoggins is Tracy Scoggins is a much better Cat Grant. I agree. Than um what's her name? Allie McBeal. Allie McBeal, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm gonna call. <laughs> Allie McGrant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Although she's Calista, not horrible Cal- after Calista watching Flock- this again. Yes, yeah, Calista Yeah, Flockhart. Calista Flockhart. But her lips, um, what's up with her lips, man? Something's I up. don't know, and it looks like she's her Look, whole she had a hair, really her whole face is white. It's a really bad lip job, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. What's but, going on there? Uh I think she's okay. Uh she's supposed to be abrasive, so yeah, we're we'll supposed see, to see not love her. We'll see where it goes. Yeah. If we don't love her, that's good. Yeah. We're supposed to. Right. It's working. That's but Yeah. <laughs> that's right. It's so we, so we do another little twelve year uh jump, time jump, where we get introduced to Kara as a dorky dorky office assistant right out of the Devil Wears Prada. hmm I mean, pretty much like she's Dead Anne on. she's Anne Hathaway in Devil Wears Prada and right. and uh Calista Flockhart is Glenn Close. Right. So Glenn Close? Or yeah, isn't it Glenn Close? No. No, I'm sorry. I, uh, and now I can't remember. Oh, Meryl Streep. Thank you, Meryl Streep. Okay, it's one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> it's either, if it's not one actress, it's the other one. Okay. <laughs> it's Meryl Streep. Okay, fine. Meryl Streep. Yes, it was Meryl okay. Streep. Uh, so, yeah, she's working at CatCo uh, for Cat Grand, of course. Uh, personal assistant. Personal assistant. So, basically, she gets to be treated like crap. And we've, we feel sorry for Kara because she's working for a tyrant boss. Right. It's Devil Wears Prada. Right. It's and she, it seems like she wants to do more. Yep. But she is a personal assistant. Yep. And I'm thinking you're a personal assistant. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Or if it's not Devil Wears Prada, it's the uh, Black Widow sketch from Saturday Night Live, Black Widow Age of Me. Right. If you've seen that sketch on Saturday Night Live, you know what I'm talking about. Right. It was brilliant. Yeah, it was. I love that sketch. Quite funny. Um. But uh, Kara's forced to reveal herself to the world when her adoptive sister's plane, and this is her adopted sister, Alex Danvers, uh, gets sabotaged somehow. So no coincidence there. And she's got to save everyone. Well, it wasn't a coincidence, though. Yeah. That it Ka- wasn't. That Alex is on the same plane that Kara has to rescue? It wasn't because she works for this shadow agency and they were yeah. trying to kill her and the reason she works for the agency is because she's Kara's sister <laughs> so. it's nice of catch 22 yeah. yeah right but uh Sorry, this, Cara. This, yeah Kara. yeah yeah Kara, yeah. Kara, but yeah it's Kara. it's not you don't pronounce it's, it like you pronounce my name it's it's, uh, it's Kara. yeah and she goes fast like a car yes i know Sorry. That's okay. But this whole sequence I loved with the plane Kara bringing the plane down. Yeah, me too. So and she had to turn it in the right. Yeah, it. she's just like, "Oh, come on." And she has I to know. like turn it to avoid the hitting the bridge. Right. Right. Cuz she's out of practice with her powers. Well, sure. So. She hasn't flown in years, she says. Right. right. But but uh, thankfully she got it together enough to bring say bring the plane to safety. Mhm. And how horrible would that have been if she had failed to do that and her sister died? I know. Right? <laughs> like that, really, the- that kind of got really dark really easy. The auto binder bridge. Auto, yes, a nice shout out to Auto Binder. Yep, named after the co creator of Supergirl. Yep. So that's awesome. Yep. And of course, National City is named after National Comics, uh, comics yes. which later turned into DC Comics. Right. It was the, uh, the predecessor mm-hmm. until they renamed them, rebranded as DC Comics. Yep. Right. National Comics Publications. Right. So uh, I don't think that she did damage to Auto Binder Bridge, though. Well, you know. I know. I like that she got very upset with that. Yeah. Hey, look, I saved a plane. Right. They're giving her crap. Right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But uh, Kat names her Supergirl, mm-hmm. which Kara Fale thinks is a little weird because, like, you know, girl, right. why not Superwoman? Right. And but... it, there's a whole big, like, rant from Kat going, well, I'm a girl. Right. You're and a girl. I think she explains it nicely. Right. I think that was just to kind of head off the, like... 
well, she should be superwoman. Right. Criticism. I think we should take back those words, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And this is not me being some militant. Yeah. Feminist. Feminist or whatever. Yeah. I'm not. Uh, girl, there's nothing wrong with the word girl. Right. In gonna my take, opinion. Going to take it back. Supergirl's going to take the word back. That's right. We so should take it back. We, so support that. I'm a girl. Yep. Right? Uh, last time I checked? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, Wynn, who pretty much crushes on Kara, we, th Kara, we think... Yeah, he crushes on her. But he helps her with her costume. Now, did and you he, think he was the Winshot the first time you saw it? Yeah. I mean, I thought, we thought, I mean, his, his full name's Winslow Shot. He goes by the name Win. Right. So we kind of thought, well, he's the Toy Man or will be the Toy Man. Right. But that is the not Superman true. villain. But no, apparently we find out now from casting that he's Winslow Shot Jr. Right. See, that and, flew completely under my radar the first time I saw it. Yeah. Because they called him Win, and I was like... Right. They don't really refer to him as Junior. I think they changed, decided after the fact to add his father and make his father the Toy Man. Do you think? I think so. Okay. I think they decided, well, he's not menacing enough to be Toy Man. Okay. So we'll create his father, make it his father. Is the uh, well, and she also came out to him, which yeah. would have been yeah. really bad down the yeah, line. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But so. uh, but did, I also got kind of a little bit of a gay vibe from Wynn. You know what? Me too. But I don't think he is. Yeah. Maybe he's just one of those, like, he's a metrosexual. So he right. kind of comes off as gay, but he's not gay. Right. Which is perfectly okay. So don't. I agree. No, no, no need to send hate mail. <laughs> I agree. Like, just cool out. It's okay. <laughs> right. Um, Alex re gets revealed, as you said, working for the Department of Extra Normal Operations, the DEO from the DC Universe. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping we see uh, Chase. Oh, okay. From, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. from DC Comics. So. And Hank Henshaw. Yeah, under the leadership of Hank Henshaw. Who, this who, is kind of yeah, a this is, twist on... Yeah, because this is a big Superman villain who ends up becoming the cyborg Superman. Right. And Hank Henshaw was... He was essentially, there was a, when he was introduced, he was part of this quartet of astronauts. That was a total ripoff. Take of the Fantastic Four. Of the Fantastic Four. Four. Right. So essentially, Hank Henshaw is like the DC version of Reed Richards, only he's evil. Right. And he becomes a cyborg Superman. Right. And it's because they take debris to remake him into the cyborg, and some yeah. of the debris is Kryptonian. Yeah. And when they test him, they think he might be the Superman after yeah. the death of Superman. Yeah. Well, his whole thing is he breaks down and becomes, he can interface with electronics. Right. But so. this is after, uh, what, Darkseid kills him? D d well, no, no. no. <laughs> what, what, what happens is in the story, when he's introduced, he, his body breaks down and you think, oh, he's dead. Mm -hmm. when, when in fact his body changed to kind of like energy that it could interface with computers. Right. He brings himself back as like this technological creature. Right. And then when Superman dies. Right. Uh, Hank Henshaw shows up as the cyborg Superman pretending to be Superman. Right. Only with the story that, oh, these aliens rebuilt me to right. save my life. But right. really, I'm just scamming you all and I'm the big villain of the story. Right. But there's four people. That yes, claimed to be Superman. Right. There was one that was Steel, John Henry Irons, and then right. the clone of uh, the clone Superboy. Right. And then um, the Eradicator. Right. And then, so, and then Cyborg, Cyborg Superman. Superman. Right. So um, that was all during the reign of the Superman storyline. Correct. I and that's actually the book I recommended. Yes. Last week in the. It's a great storyline. It, it is a great one. That was but, when, like 90s Superman comics. That was their peak right there. I'm assuming he's not going to do that in this. And so why they made him Hank Henshaw, I'm not sure. Why well, didn't they maybe just. Maybe he's going to go down a dark road. Maybe. I don't know. but And become a cyborg. Yeah. Well, maybe he'll get like interface with some alien technology. Yeah, maybe. And uh, maybe it takes him over or something and becomes cyborg. The I just, I think it's weird that they just didn't make him some generic right. and guy. Since, since apparently they were only allowed to uh, use the name Superman once, I'm kind of kind of curious what they would it's call it. It's not true. They can you know? they can name him whatever. Uh, okay. They can say Superman as many times as they want. Um, they just want to make this show about Supergirl. Okay, that's well, what they said. Well, it seems like you know they said it right at the beginning, and then everybody goes out of their way not no, to say Superman. No, they're not. They're not restricted. They said. Well, they need to like get over that because embrace it. Because it seems lame if you don't. 
Yeah, they said they weren't expecting so many people to be upset about it. So, well, they, guess what? Surprise, it's the internet. Welcome, yeah. to, welcome to the world, guys. I know. Uh, so Henshaw, he totally distressed Supergirl because she's an alien. He's mm-hmm. got this big alien, anti-alien agenda, so we'll see where that goes. Right. Uh, they, Kara learns that there are hundreds of aliens hiding out on Earth, most of whom came from this prison that crashed on Earth when she when, did. When she did, right. When she did. Because of her. Yeah. Yeah. Fort Roz. Yep. Fort Roz. Get it? Fortress? It's a, right. it's a play on words. Yeah. Fort uh-huh. Roz. But yeah, this was essentially in the comics, Fort Roz was this place in the Phantom Zone uh, where like General Zod and the others kind of hold up mm-hmm. while they're in the Phantom Zone. Phantom mm-hmm. Zone. See, I'm, now I'm doing it. Right. Yep. But, uh, and, but in this case, uh, Allura was the one responsible for imprisoning this, these criminals in right. Fort Roz. Right. So, so needless to say, a lot of people, a lot of villains have a grudge against Allura, and they're going to take it out on Supergirl. Right. Because Allura is not there to right. take to, it out on. Exactly. So who better than her daughter? Mm-hmm. Lucky her. Uh, Kara's actions attract the attention of Vartox. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was really interesting, and uh, the Cardassian. Yeah, he looks like a he looked like a Cardassian from little... Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. The little bumpy forehead. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. It's like it's almost like Michael Westmore like came straight from Star Trek: The Next Generation and did the makeup for these, right. these villains. It's like you gotta step your game up. This is 2015. But that's the deal, though, we've, isn't we've it? We've had Farscape. We've had Doctor Who. You can do better. Change aliens. the forehead. and Yeah, we don't need bumpy forehead aliens. Yeah. Guys, come on. I know. Uh, um, so points off of that. Um, with Alex gui- Alex's guidance, she's able to finally defeat Vartox. Okay. Um, and then later on, um, after all, it's all said and done. Jimmy Olsen, who is now going by James Olsen, because we've got... James, we, don't call me Jimmy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we've got McCod Brooks oh. from True Blood. Eggs from True Blood. Wow! Yeah, yeah. And also Necessary Roughness. Who is essentially the bizarro Jimmy Olsen, because I couldn't picture an actor that was the more opposite of Jimmy Olsen. From oh, the but movies. he's awesome. Please, but he, come but on. He's, but he's a cool actor, so we mm. kind of we'll th- overlook that. But uh, so he reveals he s- was sent by Superman to look after Kara. Mm-hmm. And he gives her a gift from Superman. That's right. Blanky. Uh, yep. A new cape for her costume mm-hmm. made from Clark's blanket. They were sent to Earth in as a kid, but I got to wonder how big this blanket is because he made his own cape from it and he's got room left over for I know. for Kara. But anyway, so Supergirl now has an indestructible cape, so they don't have to trash her cape. Agreed. So lastly, Vartox's superior is revealed to be Astra, Allura's twin sister, which means it's Supergirl's evil aunt. So they're going the evil aunt route. And of course, she wants to conquer Earth because... You know, bad guy. So she's apparently the big bad. Because you know, bad guy. So we've got Laura Benanti playing dual roles as Supergirl's mother in flashbacks or holograms or what have you. And then also as Astra. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't want to spring for a different actress. So that's all I got. Unless you uh, have anything else. Yes, I do. Okay, hit it. What did they refer to Astra as in this episode? A general. Not just a general. Uh, I, I don't know where you're going with that. Well, why don't you tell me? The general. The general. And she so, was in Fort Ross. Yeah. So is it, you're thinking that she's essentially like this version of General Zod? Or I'm something? not thinking. You know it. Yes. You know she's General Zod. Uh, it not only has been intimated, it has been... Uh... So they're going the female General Zod route. Right. Plus she has a commander. Mm-hmm. Like, like General yeah. Zod. Right. And we know Nan's going to show up. Right. So it's interesting. Okay. So I think that's the route they're going. Interesting. She's going to be that General Zod. Well, that's going to make the relationship with Ursa really interesting. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, uh, should, that should be a fun scene. <laughs> well, hey. <laughs> yep. You never know. Uh, yeah. So that that's what I have been told to understand. So we're going to kneel before Astra. That doesn't quite play well. Hey, come on. <laughs> Uh, that's all I can say. Plus this as well. Come on, go there. There you go. Okay. 
Alrighty then. I wasn't sure where you're going with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we got a lot to cover. So, um, what was your rating for this? I gave it eight smelly elevators. Eight smelly elevators. I gave this one seven and a half out of ten crashing airplanes. Mm. So anyway, so I thought it was a good start. Yep, good start. Um, I think it's. I think people have been for those. If you if you watched it online, you might want to give it another viewing. And see how the the editing does for you in this one. I think it comes off a little better. Mm -hmm. And uh, if nothing else, you got to support this show because, hey, we finally got like a female-led superhero show. Right. And it's good. Yeah. And it's the first one we've had since Birds of Prey. Since Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey, yeah. So, yeah, we know we covered that just not too long ago. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I want to mention also yeah. that online on the CBS website, not only can you watch the pilot episode again, yep. but they have a version of it with commentary uh, with the showrunners and the director. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's good to watch as well. It's very interesting. They're also very entertaining and funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, I highly recommend you have to watch this first right? because you don't actually get to see the real episode one because they're talking over it obviously okay. um but it's it's very funny you get a lot of behind the scenes sort of stuff and they tell jokes they crack jokes about things um they were saying that that building that she lives in yeah is in los angeles and it's in a horrible neighborhood <laughs> and the joke they told was the reason she lives in that building is because she's the super Ugh. right that's the joke uh. they Telling. It's the worst uh, joke ever, okay. but that's the kind of thing that they're saying in All the right. whole thing. So th- that's kind of the tone of it, and it, it's really good. I highly recommend watching it. All right. So, okay, moving on. Mm-hmm. The Flash, episode two hundred four, the Fury of Firestorm. Yay! Yay! Uh, written by Except, Kai. Go ahead. I didn't like this. You didn't like this. Well, I thought I thought this one was pretty okay. I liked it. Um, written by Kai Yu Wu and Joe Patrac- Paracchio. Directed by Stefan Plazinski. And my God, that's a lot of consonants in that name. I know. So yeah. Polish, uh, do you think? Probably. Yeah. I'm guessing. Or somewhere around Stephane, there. Stefan, though. I somewhere. Stefan. Yeah. <laughs> Stefan. Yeah. Anyway, okay, I could go this bill. If you're looking for a good time. If you're looking for the the club, uh, whatever. Go to Blush. Yeah, exactly. So you can go this whole bill hater from Saturday Night Live route. Yep. All right. Um, So Team Flash, following up on the cliffhanger from last week, where Professor Stein uh, collapses once again. Mm-hmm. Uh, they stabilize him, but only for a short period while they locate another viable f- partner for the from the for the uh, Firestorm Matrix. Mm-hmm. The team identifies two candidates: one, a scientist named Henry Hewitt, who Caitlin really likes. And, Snob. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, there's former high school student or former high school football star named Jefferson Jax Jackson, and Hewitt. Uh, he's a, he's a bit odd, but he's really excited to merge with Stein. Totally and, stuck up. And yeah. And he's played by DeMar Barnes. De, yeah. De, DeMar Barnes. Excuse he me. He did a good job with yeah, the Yeah, he character. does. Yeah, he did. Um, I've, everything I've seen this guy, DeMar Barnes, and he's done a really good job. So I was. The I was character confused. was just completely arrogant. Yeah. Um, and he's got a little bit of anger management issues. You think? To say, to say the least. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so he attempts to merge with Stein, but it fails. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> and Hewitt ends up leaving angrily. He's like, ah. Oh, don't get my hopes up. Yeah. Why waste it? Don't waste my time with this. Right. Bunch, you know, all this. Now, can I just say that I thought it was creepy that Barry went out and took blood samples without their permission? Yeah, a little bit. Because uh, I wouldn't want that to happen, really. Right. What are you going to do with my blood? Right. Yeah. Well, they didn't know. Well, he could still, say, maybe lay the whole, I'm a police scientist, you know. Still. Thing. Yeah. I think I'd be a little suspicious. Leary. Leary. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't be happy about it. Unless he did it super speed and nobody noticed. He did. Yep. He said they didn't notice. I don't know how you draw blood at super speed, though, because it still has to come out of the body on its mm-hmm. own. Right. Yeah. It's like he can't make it go faster. So, but it was I thought it was pretty creepy. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't want that to happen. Right. Um so anyway they they after this attempt Hewitt now unknowingly is connected to the Firestorm Matrix. Mhm. 
Meanwhile, good old Dr. Wells, the Earth 2 Dr. Wells, apparently, presumably, possibly, uh, breaks into Mercury Labs and steals some unknown device, but ends up getting noticed by Tina McGee on the old uh, playback. Wells? Wells? Harrison? Harrison? And but I but he's dead. I've seen it confirmed that he was stealing the gun that he uses at the end of the episode. Yes, right. Uh, I've also seen it confirmed that he is Earth Two Wills. Right. So no, whether he's they also evil, him. we'll find out. Right. Whether he well, turns out to be Zoom or not. I'm assuming that he is the actual Wells, but that doesn't mean anything. No, he could be like bad guy as well. Right. The Earth Two Reverse Flash, for all we know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So uh, Jefferson, Jax, initially refuses uh, to merge with Stein after Caitlin dismisses him for his wasted potential or something. Yeah. He's totally, like, disses him. Like, because yeah. he's, he's not, like, some elite. Because he's not a scientist. Yeah. Like, well, apparently he's got the potential, the skills, but, you know, he decided to play sports. So that makes him, like, dumb or something, apparently. And he did well in school, but he didn't go off to college. And what a snob, because he blew out his knee and he couldn't right. afford to go to college. And I'm so angry with her about this. Yeah, she's kind of riding Jax's ass hard I'm at this one. so mad at her. Yes. And if this is foreshadowing for her kind of turning. To the dark side? Yeah. Killer then yeah. they're doing a good job. Yeah. Because I was pretty pissy with yeah. her this week. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, I did like that he's a natural hero, right? Because they showed this at the beginning of the episode because he yeah. saved the kid, yeah. right? When the when the initial um, the particle accelerator wave hit, his whole concern was trying to get everybody off the field and in, into the uh, the stadium, right, for protection, right? So and then he ends up kind of mirroring that when yeah. he decides to go and save uh, the professor. By right. going back and changing his mind. Yeah. And being a hero that way. Pretty much. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Hewitt, who ends up getting the, the tagged with a codename Tokamak from the Firestorm comics. So he's a legit dude. DC Comics wise. Legit. He's legit. Too legit. He's legit to quit. Yeah. Too legit to quit. Yep. So he attacks with his new abilities. And then Jefferson, like you said, agrees to merge with Professor Stein. And, of course, it's successful. Mm-hmm. Uh, because Jax is awesome. Yep, Jax is awesome. So uh, now Stein is a little iffy about Jax because, well, you know, he figures, well, he's listens to that rap music or something. Yeah. And then, and I do like the fact that they made so this funny. joke that um, Jax said, well, I've got some Titanic soundtrack in the back. Right. Which is a nod, of course, because Victor Garber was in was Titanic. In Titanic. That, was, yeah. that was, I see what you did there, Flash. Exactly. Showed I thought that it. was great. I see that. Mm-hmm. So pretty sly. Mm-hmm. Well, well, well played. Um, but eventually Stein gets over it. And uh, helping them with the fact that, well, hey, the merge worked nice. That worked good. So uh, the new Firestorm joins Barry in helping to take down Hewitt. Uh, forcing Hewitt to get even angrier as he burns himself out and loses his abilities. And they take him out. Stein is very pleased with Jax at this point. He's like, hey, we worked well together. Mm -hmm. So um, Iris ends up meeting her mother, Francine, at Jitters and explains that she looked into Francine's background, knows that this disease that apparently she's dying from is real. Okay, can we just talk about McGregor's disease for a second? Yeah, you know, the disease that Mr. Freeze's wife was suffering from in Batman and Robin? Right, not in the comics, ever, just in Batman and Robin, and it's a completely fabricated disease, Mm -hmm. and there's absolutely nothing behind it, and I think it's fitting, because this is an absolutely nothing character in the (laughs) flash. Can I just say that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Enough said. All right. (laughs) Well, Iris isn't happy happy with her either. Right. So, I'm not. She's just, yeah. uh, you know, I like the actress. Yeah. But. Vanessa Williams. Not right. the Not the Vanessa not, Williams. Yeah. The, actress. the other the other Vanessa Williams. Right. Uh, I like her very much, but this character is just terrible. Yes. This is literally, she's literally just a vehicle to introduce Wally into yes. the show. Yes. So I was, getting, I was getting to that. No, no, I know. But I'm saying the fact that she has this completely fictional made up 
nothing disease that has never been explained and has only been in one of the very worst Batman movies ever. Well, no, her other purpose, though, was to fend off the critics that were saying, well, where's Iris's mother at? Yeah. Oh, okay. Great. So now we've explained Iris's mother. Now we can get rid of her and forget about her. Hand wave, hand wave. Yeah, exactly. And she's never going to come back. Probably. Yeah, I'm guessing never. Yeah. Or, you know, they're going to have a funeral. She'll be a supervillain. No, just kidding. No, she's not coming back for that. No, she's not. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. She is just a vehicle. She's yeah. a nothing character with a yeah. nothing disease. <laughs> that's, that's all I have to say about that. That's cold, man. That's cold. And? That's like Killer Frost cold. Yeah, well. Yep. Yeah. All right. So Am I wrong? So we find out, Iris found out that she had a son eight months after leaving Joe. So obviously the kid is Joe's, apparently. Mm-hmm. So, which means that if they are introducing Wally West, that means instead of being Iris's nephew, Wally is now her brother. Right. Okay. It's fine. All right. Are you upset by that? Well, I, what's so hard about making Wally her nephew? Like, there's she got a sister somewhere. Yeah, I don't Older know. sister. What's up with that? Why not just, I don't know. just make him, it's not that hard to make him her nephew. I, I get that. I don't get it, but... <laughs> But yeah, I I understand what you're saying. No, it's not that hard to write. That's, I don't know why I have to change that. Because they want to get him onto the show. But I mean, and I'm, yeah. this is an easier way to get him to come and live with them. All he's just to say is like, I'm attending Central City University or something. Yeah. What is I, so hard about that? I understand. They don't I have really to go do. through this whole thing with Iris's mom, and she's got a I, disease, and she's dying. Oh, and by the way, she's got a son that Joe never knows about. I know. And it just seems... Now, I, angst. Why? Why? Angst. I don't get it. Yeah. Okay. So well, Iris is furious with her mother about holding all this stu- hiding this stuff. And we know how Iris gets when people hide stuff from her. Right. Except season. now what is she going to do? Yeah. Well, now she never wants to see her mother again. But she's going to hide it from her father. Yeah. So she's going to do the exact same thing. Hypocrite. Pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Flash Riders, what are you doing to me? I know, right? <sighs> Killing me here. So do you understand why I'm giving this such a low grade? I, I get it. I mean, it's not a horribly low grade, but it's, you know. Yeah, it's, I get it. Um, Plus, what is the show named? The Flash. Right. Yeah. So, well, it's okay to focus on the other characters once in a while. It is? Yes. Okay. It is. It's a cast. It's not just No, I get Frank, it. But Frank Dustin. When you Yeah. Okay. When the show is bad when right. you take out a character, then you shouldn't focus on someone else. <laughs> well, maybe they maybe they're trying to give Grant Gustin a break by having like, okay, we'll focus on Firestorm for a while and then No, what they're they, doing yes. is they're leading up to legends. Yes. Well they have to set up that yes. That's what they're doing. I know that. Speaking yeah. of which, yeah, that was a nice segue you just did. Thank you. you. You served that up on a plate for me. That was nice. Mm-hmm. Stein and Jax decide to leave for Pittsburgh to train together. And Pittsburgh, of course, from the Firestorm comics, but that was Ronnie right. and the professor. But right. uh, anyway. Legend and it's, what is it, Hudson University? Hudson, yeah, something like that. But anyway. So what's the deal with the compass? Good question. I'm getting to that. Yeah, okay. I'm getting, I'm getting to that. Caitlin gives, I was just going to that. Caitlin gives Jax Ronnie's compass as a good bride present. Probably the lamest present ever. I know, right? Um, Because it's like, hey, I know I was a bitch, but here's Ronnie's compass. He's my dead boyfriend or fiance or, oh, wait, oh, he's my dead husband this week. Right. He's he's my dead husband who may or not, may or may not be dead because we never saw a body. Right. Um, He could be stuck on Earth too for all we know, but we haven't bothered looking. Right. And I know this compass means absolutely nothing to you, Jax, but here it is. Mm-hmm. Hang on to it for me. Right. I don't so get... is it going to be important at some point down the road to Jax? I don't think so. Unless okay. Ronnie comes and takes it back. I don't know. All right. I thought, it was kind I of thought that was really dumb. Forced and yeah, I don't get it either. Right. Um, so Stein tries once more to get Cisco to tell everybody about his metahuman powers, but Cisco's like, no. Yeah, and I did like the line where Caitlin said to him, if you could have metahuman powers, would you take them? And he was like, yeah, in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, all sarcastic. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, why wouldn't I? Right. Right. And then lastly, and this is where things just completely come out of nowhere, and I love okay. this. This was the best part yes. of the entire episode. Because this is kind of a, like a, a, a pretty episode. Right. And then all of a sudden they have this awesome ending. Right. And I like where, that, where the first fly- of all, Go ahead. Grant Gustin is doing like a voiceover yes. as he's walking down the street. Right. And then Patty is walking yes. well, no, down she's the street. In, she, she's in jitters. Okay. Okay. She, so she's... Yeah, what I've got here is... Kind of opposite him. Yeah, Patty's watching Patty through jitters. So basically, he's kind of stalking her a little bit. A little bit, yeah. And and he's just like, kind of like, well, maybe these are like, you, you know, because they've kind of played up this whole thing well um, during this episode that, hey, you should go out and try new things. Or, you know, right. like maybe what you thought you wanted, you could try something else. Kind of hinting that, okay, Barry could go after Patty instead of Iris. Right. Okay. So what happens as he's watching there going, being all mopey, broody superhero, the giant hand reaches in and grabs him. And he's like, wah! That was the best. The best. And, and, it the, turns, and it turns out to be the, the hand belong- just comes into the yes. scene. <laughs> yes. It's this big hand, which belongs to none other than King Shark. Right. And if you read any of Gail Simone's Secret Six, you're like, I'm a shark, I'm a shark, I'm a shark. And it was, you know, the whole thing was she had been getting like these yeah, shark Patty, teeth and stuff. Yeah, yeah, Patty found like some shark teeth. They kind of set this up earlier in the episode. Right. And they called it a land shark or whatever. Yes, and I kept been. saying, you know, yep. Candy Graham. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because that's that's a, like an old Chevy Chase Saturday Night Live sketch right, from right, way, right. Back in, way back in the golden ages of uh, the 70s pizza delivery <laughs> and the, are you sure you're not a shark land shark ma'am <laughs> candy graham <laughs> candy graham ma'am yep it was so yeah. great and then, and then oh this was so great also, yeah so king shark steps out in his full cgi glory and it was just perfect dead on oh. like from like the secret six era um not this like current version, new fifty two version where he's a hammerhead shark, which looks pretty lame in my. Oh, opinion. it was awful. Yeah, but this was but great. This, this is great. Um, now we only get he's only on there a short while because he says he's like sent by Zoom to kill the Flash, so he's one of those Earth two villains apparently, mm-hmm. which which means there could be an Earth one King Shark. Just saying. That's all right. Um, but uh, Barry ends up getting saved because Dr. Wells steps out of the shadows and he uses that energy weapon to incapacitate or kill. I'm not, it's a little vague here. Right. King Shark. So that means that Wells knows. Right. And Barry, that he needs that and gun. Barry goes, you know, like he's got a hoodie on. Right. So we've got reverse flash and a hoodie. And yeah. Barry goes after him, pulls the, he pulls the hoodie down. And it's like, Wells. Right. And then, you know, that's your cliffhanger. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. But, uh, but how great is King Shark, man? I that know. Was, that was now, glorious. I have to say to the writers mm-hmm. of Flash, if you learn anything from this, yep. it is we need a fight between Grodd and King oh, Shark. That would just kill the budget, though. I don't care. I know. I know. We, we need to start like a um, Kickstarter to fund this episode <laughs> so it somebody's, has to happen yeah. but between grod and king shark there is nothing they cannot do on this show i'm sorry those and, that was the best part of the show hands any, down anything is fair game now right so that's awesome right. anything anything you've wanted to see for years could happen on the flash i know I forget, know. forget all the other comic book shows at the moment. The Flash has like incredible potential. I almost jumped out of my seat. Yes. When I saw that fin come into the screen. You could see the atomic skull. You could see, you know, like right? anything. I was dying. And, oh, Grodd. Can you see Grodd and him fighting? Yes. Oh, that was You could, you could see epic. like an actual huge Solomon Grundy. You could see anything. Oh, yeah. Please, let's do. Yeah. So, oh. so, so much potential here. Yeah. So we had the so what, we had the Victor Garber Titanic reference. And then we also had uh, the company where Henry Hewitt worked is called Brooke Eichmeier. Uh, it's called Eichmeier Industries, named from, after Brooke Eichmeier, the writer. Eich- yeah. Right. Um, 
right so anyway, from the flash, I just wanted yeah. to throw that in there. Um, I gave it a seven shark's teeth, mm-hmm. and I it would have been a six. That's how much I disliked this yeah. episode. But, but the awesome up. shark and Jax, because I like Jax. Yeah, Jax is good. Friends drum A as Jax. Um, I was originally going to take shark teeth, so you stole mine. Sorry. So I, that's okay. It happens. I'm cool with it. Um, so I give it, but I enjoy this a little bit more because if nothing else, King Shark, come on. Yeah. Oh. Um, so, and it was a big Firestorm episode and I'm a huge Firestorm guy. So I kind of, like rate, I rate this one a little higher. I give this one eight out of 10 lame compass presents. Right. Because and that it was, was lame. That was pretty lame, Caitlin. There were just so. too many eye rolls for me in this episode. Yeah. yeah. Okay, real quick. Uh, iZombie, 204. Even cowgirls get the black and blues. You can do quick on this one. Yeah, written by... Although Deer- this was good. Yeah, this is good. Written by Deirdre Mangan, directed by Matt Barber. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got... Start off with Peyton hugging it out with Liv at aerobics class. Mm-hmm. Liv thanks Peyton for the birthday cake she left in the fridge. And Peyton says she knows how rough the past year was on Liv. And then she feels bad for bailing on her on top of everything else. Right. But so, yes. Why didn't you tell me? Right. Why did you leave? Mm-hmm. Or yeah, exactly. So there's still some question or blanks that need to be filled in for Peyton, right. as far as I'm concerned. Right. So um, well, then we'll see where that goes. Uh, Liv, Ravi, and Clive investigate the case of the week, which is a strangled waitress who was writing to this inmate, but the letters were returned unopened. Mm-hmm. A uh, cowboy singing waitress. Yes. Yeah. She's apparently in the country and western. And uh, hence the title of the episode. Clive gets introduced to FBI agent Dale Bazio, mm-hmm. who is apparently investigating the unsolved missing person cases of the rich and powerful people in Seattle. So apparently they're getting nice special <laughs> treatment. Major. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they're getting nice special treatment from the FBI there on that one. Mm-hmm. And of course, all of these are zombie related and, now- and with, with Major. Um, and she's also apparently interested in Clive, which I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah. Now, she, Clive is already suspicious of Major. Yes. For the other stuff. Now, if she and Clive start talking mm-hmm. and she starts suspicious, being suspicious of Major Comparing because notes. of the dog, Minor, which I think is hilarious. Right. Or dog. We don't know. They, they're still working out the name. I'm sorry, but Minor would be great. Yeah. Um. If, if she gets suspicious of him, then boy, are they going to dive in and investigate him. Right. All roads are leading to Major, and it's not yep. looking pretty for... No, it's not. Yeah. But he kind of brought it on himself a lot of ways. So, yeah. He sure did. Um, so, the brain of the week turns Liv into a passionate country singer. Mm-hmm. And Liv and Clive end up going to this pawn shop where the former inmate works now. And the inmate says he saw her, the waitress play at a country western bar. So that all re- leads into the country western bar. Liv, while she's at the pawn shop, picks up a picks up a guitar and starts strumming it, and like play starts playing it mm-hmm. because now she's got the skills. And so she buys the guitar and starts writing songs. Mm-hmm. So that's where that's... playing the guitar, I'm guessing, is like muscle memory. Probably, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, Blaine, meanwhile, is wondering about his two disappeared zombie clients. Uh, last week wasn't as good, and I realized it's probably because it was Blaineless. So you figured now that more, more Blaine, things get on up upscale a little bit? Yeah. I, I may not love him, but he's good on this He show. livens things up. Yeah. Yeah, he does. And it's not all, like, emo drama. No. With, when exactly. he's around. So, yeah. Um, unless he kills somebody that somebody cares about, then it becomes emo, emo drama. Yes. Yeah. So Blaine's henchman, uh, tells him that they found Gabriel, the guy who tainted the utopium at the boat party, mm-hmm. but he's now a preacher and he won't cooperate even after they beat him around for a while. Right. Uh, major meanwhile. Which is, is so dumb. Yes. Why doesn't he just tell them? Major is off playing video games when Ravi comes home, wonders where the dog is. Minor. Yeah. Yeah. And, How uh, high do you think he is at that point? Yeah. Apparently he's because he was so stoned on Utopium that he left the door open. The dog got out. Mm-hmm. And Ravi lays into him and goes to look for the dog, tells him to look for the dog. Mm-hmm. And Major's like, yeah, I'll get right on that or whatever. 
Blaine turns Gabriel into a zombie, lets him go because he's being difficult still, but he knows eventually he'll talk and he'll want to come back for some brains. Mm -hmm. So he's just biding his time because he's trying to find out what's going on with that utopium. Um, Hold on. He wants his recipe. wants, Wants his recipe. I didn't hear after, so he just. So he just, well, he he lets him go and then knows that um, Gabriel will eventually talk right. because he's got to come back for brains. Right. So he, he wants, he'll eventually spill his guts on his recipe for Utopia. Right. Yeah. Right. At the DA's office, Blaine shows up. He's all over the place this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, agrees to help Peyton take down Boss in exchange for immunity. really charming. Ex- in exchange for immunity. So mm-hmm. he's, work, he's working that angle. Ravi ends up finding the dog um, through a bulletin board or whatever for lost pets. And apparently the dog was at a park where Major kidnapped his owner. So poor dog goes back to look for his owner and uh, gets picked up. But I know. So I feel really bad for this dog. I know. He's me stuck. Too. And apparently Ravi does too because Ravi just rips into Major at this point. Mm-hmm. Long overdue. It is. And says he can't even... And by the way, when you invite one of my ex-girlfriends to live here, Mm -hmm. it would be nice for a heads up. Yep. Yeah. The line I liked was where he says that that Major can't even take care of himself, let alone an animal. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is true. It is. And uh, Major's like, so Ravi takes the dog. He's like, look, I'm taking care of this dog now. You suck at it. Right. So Major promises, like, oh, yeah, I'll get on that. I'll get fix him. I'll get myself in, together here. Now, is this bad news for Ravi? Probably. Probably. Because the but, dog belonged to the murdered right, guy. Right. But, um, but Major's like, okay, well, yeah, I'm going to get myself together. But then he immediately leaves to go score some more Utopium. And he gets himself a booty call from Gilda. Mm-hmm. Rita. Yeah, Rita. But as far mm-hmm. as he knows, it's Rita, but it's really Gilda. Right. You would think eventually he'd go over to Liz and like, oh, there's Gilda, right? Or Rita right there. Right. Except he's trying to distance himself from yeah. Liz. But actually, somewhere, at some point where he gets, after he gets this booty call on his cell phone, he decides, okay, apparently I need to go to Liv. And right. he tells Liv that uh, he needs help, which yep. he does. Yeah, he really does. And, and because her parting shot, you, did you mention that she went over to his house? Mm-mm. I don't remember you saying anything. No, no, I think I skipped that part. Sorry. Yeah, she went over to his house and confronted him and said, look, I understand we're over and it's painful for both of us, so I'm going to let you go. Right. But, I, you know, I think it's wrong that you're freezing me out and, you know, you were the one thing in my life that was real. Right. And... And then he's like, okay, whatever. And he shuts the door on her. And she comes back in and screams at him. And she's like, well, thank you for ruining the, yeah. you know, this one good thing that was in my life. Right. And then she walks back out. And I think that's the thing that draws him back to her is that she said it was the one true thing in my life. And he says, well, at least she's not going to lie to me. Mm-hmm. And so he says, I need help. And he knows at that point, yeah, okay. I'm doing all these horrible things, but she's not, first of all, she probably won't judge me for them. Mm -hmm. And secondly, she won't lie to me. She won't coddle me. Yep. So I can tell her whatever. But then he kisses her. Well, because he's in love with her. Is he? Or is he just? No, he's in love with her. He's not using her. No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, we'll find out. I'm sure there's a little using there, but. If it, Major really needs somebody to help him at this point, but right now he's. If it was all using, he yeah. would call Rita back. Yeah. But really, does Liv really need to get dragged into Major's crap? No. Especially since he's murdering people? No, she doesn't. And the fact that if he does let her in on the whole thing, she's in a, yeah. a huge amount of danger she'll from be, the Max Rager dude. And she'll be an accessory to murder because she's right. keeping stuff from the police. Plus, uh, if he stays over and mm. sees Gilda slash Rita, right. things are going to hit the fan. So, Yeah. Yeah, big deal. It's all, it's it's all gonna blow up horrifically. It is. It's it is. destined to blow up horrifically. Mm-hmm. So that's all I've got. Right. Uh, what did you give this episode? Uh, I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I gave it eight and a half steel guitars. Was it a steel guitar? Because I thought it was more. No, of it a wasn't. Wood- but it's gu- country. Oh, okay. It was an, I got you. It was a the acoustic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I give this one 
eight out of ten new age candles. Yeah. And that was because the other dude. Which, which I thought was hilarious because they're that FBI agent Dale Bazio, she's she gets really annoyed with Clive's co-workers new age candle. Mm-hmm. She like first like, you know, hey, get rid of that candle. It's bugging the crap out of me. Right. And oh, she, she first she goes over then she snuffs the um the flame. Mm-hmm. And then eventually she just throws the whole throws thing it out, in the throws the garbage, which I thought yeah. was hilarious. So I kind of, I kind of love that, and I appreciated it. And I like that. Uh, what's his name? Clive. Clive. Yes. Looks at her and kind of, kind of smirks a little bit when she throws <laughs> it in the garbage. Yep. I thought that was great. Yeah. So maybe she won't be. She'll actually be a re- regular character. Or it was that would be cool. Yeah. Guess it gives somebody besides Liv for Clive to hang around with. Right. And I think it's going to uh, push Major Story along yep. as well. I think so, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 305, three, season 3, episode 5. 4,722 hours. Mm-hmm. Or for those of you playing at home, 6.5 months or 196.75 days. Wow. Did the math. Nice. You're welcome. Nerd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, it's a calculator. It wasn't that hard. It wasn't. Okay. It wasn't a big nerd skill to use a calculator. Okay. okay. Uh, written by Craig Titley. <laughs> you said Titley. Titley. That's his name. I like it. Uh, Titley. Uh, <laughs> directed by Jesse Bochco. I wonder if he's related to Stephen. Hmm. Who knows? You know, maybe his son or something. Um, so this is basically the big story of what happened to Simmons when she was spending, like I said, six and a half months on the planet of blue filtered, mm-hmm. blue filters, because everything is blue, including Simmons in this episode. So very true. Yeah. So we just flip up the blue filter on everything. Um, so we find out that after being dragged through the portal, Simmons finds herself on this sunless, deserted planet. Um, or deserted, I guess. Maybe it's uh, deserted, but yeah. Deserted. It's both. It's both, really. As far as she knows, it's deserted. Uh, she comes across, eventually, after waiting and waiting and waiting, she comes, decides, okay, I guess I need some water to survive. He is the son of Stephen Botka. Oh, see, that was, my instincts served me well. Mm-hmm. Son-in-law of Ted Danson. Interesting. Step-son-in-law of Mary Steenburgen. Well-played research goddess. Mm-hmm. Kudos. Yeah. This is why, yes, this is why you're the best. Good uh, no good, good support there on that one. I yeah, he's married to Kate Danson. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Ted Danson's yeah, daughter. He's, yeah, I get it. So, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so, Simmons finally comes across this pool of water, and there's like an alien life form inside. Yeah, that was a little startling. Yeah. When I was watching it, that she got which, pulled down into which, that pool. Which, you know, like, as I'm watching this episode, she's, granted, okay, I know she's, understands she's thirsty. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't know what that water would do to her. Is there bacteria in the water? You know, she it's on an alien it, planet. It could be it's anything. life affirming. I mean, but she, is she desperate. has to have right. She has to have water at some point. So she risked it. Yeah. And um, thankfully for her, I guess she didn't get poisoning from it. Right. Um, although she almost did get killed because that alien critter pops out and tries to like. Oh, it's all tentacle porn mm-hmm. <laughs> where it goes after her. I've seen enough hentai to see. Yeah, exactly. It's going. totally hentai. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, but anyway, she uses that. She hacks off a bunch of the um, first time she gets attacked. She pulls off a, a chunk of the tentacle and she's so hungry. She chews down on it raw. Yeah. Well, again, she's hungry. She doesn't know. Yeah. But eventually yeah, she, she doesn't fig- have anything. To but do. eventually she figures out. Well, you know, I could lure it, and I could get more of it, and I could fry it up. Right. And yeah, barbecue. Right. Then sucker. she's like, you know, I'm just, yeah. I'm hungry, and yep. I'm thirsty, and I gotta, I gotta do survive. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. She goes all Oliver Queen. Mm-hmm. Or essentially, exactly. or essentially, this episode is where she's Matt Damon in The Martian. Yeah. If you've seen The Martian or read The Martian, you know that basically this episode is The Martian because right. she has to science the shit out of that. <laughs> She does. As Matt Damon says in the movie. Right. In The Martian. So, yeah. Yes, that's a quote. That's a quote. Yeah. So, relax, everybody. (laughs) Just (laughs) calm down. Um, So, she ends up, like, hearing this noise, and she ends up falling through a hole Mm -hmm. where she wakes up in this wooden cage. Mm Mm-hmm. And 
she's kind of kept there for quite a while. She's fed some food. The, she thinks that she's being fattened up for this guy to eat her. Mm -hmm. She eventually tricks her captor into coming inside, pulls the oldest trick in the book by, oh, I'm feeling sick. Come right. inside the cell. Mm -hmm. And the guy actually falls. And she gets this, free. And she gets yep. free. Um, but as she's running out and leaves the, where she's being held, she cuts her leg on this rock. Mm -hmm. And the guy catches up with her, but she, so she surrenders. She's like, okay, you got me. Mm -hmm. uh, he ends up taking her back, put patches up the wound because it, whatever it is, smells the blood. Right. And then she finds out the guy tells her that this planet doesn't have rules, only moods, mm -hmm. which is pretty interesting. Right. Uh, the guy says his name is Will. We found out his name is full name is Will Daniels. And mm -hmm. he's been there, it turns out, for 14 years. Right. He is stunned <laughs> by that news. Yes, he is totally blown away. He, um, he explains that he traveled through this portal with a team of scientists in 2001. So you have a monolith and you have 2001. I know. So if you, I know you hate Stanley Kubrick. I know, but, but it was but it this wasn't is, hard to make that comparison. But this was a big 2001 a Space right. Odyssey nod. I have seen that movie. Okay, so, so you know you got the yeah. Yes, it seemed pretty obvious. Like okay, you've got a monolith. And I think it's pretentious. That's I understand. All. I understand. <laughs> but it's a cute nod. Yeah, it so, was. Okay. So this monolith was originally in the possession of NASA, but over time, uh, they were dri the other scientists were driven mad, apparently, by this evil entity, and they ended up either killing themselves or trying to kill Daniels, mm -hmm. Will, and uh, so then he had to kill the scientist that was trying to kill him. So he ends up becoming the last one, last survivor. Mm -hmm. But we don't know really what happened. We're all taking this on Will's word. Right. Which kind of makes me wonder about the future. But anyway, <laughs> uh, Simmons, I guess there, the Will doesn't want Simmons to go anywhere near this place called No Fly Zone. Right. And she ends up eventually discovering that that No Fly Zone is a mass graveyard. Yeah. That proves that people have been coming through that portal for centuries. Mm hmm. But interestingly, Will doesn't want any her to go anywhere near there. So, hmm. And she Simmons does some more research, and she realizes that the opening of the portal can be predicted by studying the stars. Again, she's sciencing everything here, just like yeah. the Martian. Uh, right. So she studies the stars and the alignment of the planet's moons. And over months, the uh, Simmons and Will are able to anticipate the next portal or where it's going right. to be. I did like his fascination with the phone. Yes. That yeah. was great. Yeah, and, and you can feel kind of sad for Simmons. She's clinging onto this cell phone because it's got the last images of, of Fitz and everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, it's got some birthday video on there. And I thought it was really interesting because that, Simmon, that, that battery wasn't dying after hours and hours. And then they explained that, okay, Fitz kind of souped it up a little. Mm -hmm. Because I was wondering. I thought that thing would have been dead within like six hours or so. Right. But that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's good. So she got to hang on to it for quite a while until mm -hmm. she eventually used it to help power this computer, computer, mm -hmm. and uh, to help her figure out things. Uh, Will thinks that the uh, creature that cons consumed this world, making it what it is now, and Will says he's ready for this journey that they're going to have to take to get to the portal, but he and he has a gun with only one bullet in it, just in case he needs to take himself out. Mm -hmm. so, That's depressing. Yeah. And that kind of uh, pays off later in the episode, that gun. Mm -hmm. So they end up eventually arriving at this canyon. Now, this is months and months have gone by. They've kind of grown closer together by this point. Uh, they find that instead of being just 30 meters wide, this canyon is 100 meters wide. So getting across may be a little tricky. Mm-hmm. And Will says, well, it's because it, whatever it is, doesn't want them to leave. Right. So is the it able to manipulate the planet? Or is it the planet? Or is it the planet? Yeah. See, mm -hmm. I have a theory about that. Okay. Do uh, you want to talk about it now or later? Whenever you want. Okay. My, see, my theory is that this is actually Ego, the living planet. Mm. Which, if you Marvel Comics junkies know, is this sentient world 
that can manipulate itself and is an entire planet that has consciousness. Right. So that's my theory that this yeah. planet could be Ego, the living planet. I think that that's a good theory. So we'll see if I'm right on that one. But that's mm-hmm. my theory. Um, it could be just something else entirely. But uh, uh, so the, I think it's the planet. Okay, so we'll see. So look up Ego, the living planet on Wikipedia and you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, so they, that portal opens and Will quickly uh, decides, okay, we're going to tie this, this bottle that had, you know, like a message in a bottle, just like the police song. Message in a bottle. Well, actually, my all-time favorite song, by the way. Is it? Yes. The police's mm-hmm. message in a bottle is my all-time favorite song. That's uh, cool. Yep. Um, so he, uh, Will ties his, this bottle to a grappling launcher, fires it at the portal, but dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> A lot of fails this episode, but Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it just closes just before the bottle gets to pass through, and it shatters right there on the rock. Sucks to be you guys. So at this point, um, Simmons loses all hope. She's like, "We're never getting out of here. We live in. We're in Mm -hmm. hell." Mm -hmm. And then, but Will he plays this. He plays his move pretty well here. Because he's like, well, that's what I used to think until you got here. I know. And then they kiss. Yeah. Dreamy. Except for Fitzsimmons. Yeah. yeah. So if you're a Fitzsimmons fan, you're probably screaming at the TV right now. I'm a Fitzsimmons fan, but Will Daniels is yep. very cool as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, they end up seeing the flare while she, like, they, they end up having, like, this really bad wine. That's almost like vinegar by the now. Mm-hmm. That was that Simmons found in the no fly zone. Right. Uh, they see the flare that Fitz sent episodes ago mm-hmm. when they brought Simmons back. Uh, so, but so they go toward the flare, but the storm kicks up. Right. And Will tells Simmons to run for it. Well, Will <laughs> holds off it, whatever it is, it. Right. And uh, Simmons hears a gunshot. Yep. Waits for Will. And then uh, Will doesn't end up coming, so she's like, okay, I guess I'm running towards Fitz's voice. Right. While this crazy, and she does. crazy storm is going on. Right. So that's basically it. Um, Simmons tells Fitz that she wants to reopen the portal so they can return to save Will. And you see this really tragic hurt in Fitz's eyes at this point. Right. Because I think he realizes that she doesn't love me. She's in love with this Will Daniels guy. Yeah, except I don't know that that's true. As far as Fitz thinks, probably it is. Yeah, and, as far as he thinks. But, and because Fitz is very selfless when it comes to Simmons, he's like, even though you see this hurt in his eyes, he's like, we gotta go back. We're gonna, yeah, we gotta go back to the island. That's right. Yeah, we he does the whole Jack from Lost thing. Gotta get back in time. Yep. Sorry. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. So they're he, gonna. They're gonna. He's like tells her determinedly, like. We're going to get Jack back for you. Or so I mean, is, not Jack, but we're going to get Will back. Yes. Will back. Yes. Sorry, got Jack on my brain there. Yeah. And then we see... Uh, yeah, we get a little epilogue mm-hmm. where we see Will standing in sunlight. He's got the gun in his hand. Mm-hmm. So if you use that bullet, presumably the gun does nothing. But what was he shooting at? Yeah, I don't know. And, and then he drops the and, gun. And he throws it on the ground. Useless. Apparently, or yeah, what? Or well, there's no bullets, so yeah. So he throws it on the ground, or is it just that? uh, Yeah, doesn't need it. So um, the sunlight passes, and things get dark again, and he walks off. Yep. So makes me sad. Here's here's another theory for you. Okay. Okay. What if Will is really part of the planet? Yeah, I thought that as well. And he's the entity himself. Every time, because it seemed like every time Simmons encountered the entity, Will's nowhere to be found. Right. So if they go back for him, they're going to bring this evil entity to Earth. I know. Just saying. I thought the same thing. Just saying. And uh, just so you know, ego has total control over its entire mass Mm -hmm. down to the molecular level. It often shapes its surface into the appearance of a gigantic face to address powerful beings and can also shape its terrain to suit the circumstances. It is able to use its own substance to extrude tentacles Mm -hmm. 
organic sensors, plant-like growth, and to create hum humanoid vessels for its consciousness. It can shape its surface to appear as a dead, inhospitable world or into idyllic, lush green paradise to lure unwary space travelers to its surface, which it promptly consumes. So, yeah, I think it's ego. It sounds very much like ego. Yep. So that's kind of cool, though, that if that's the case. And it has gigantic tunnels yep. underneath the surface. Huge tracts of land. <laughs> <laughs> Huge tracts of land. Yeah. So uh, what did you get this episode? I really liked this episode. Like, really. Yeah, liked I it. saw you did. Yeah. Uh, I gave it nine and a half cups of vinegar wine. Nice. Yeah. I really, really liked it. See, I didn't like this one as much as you did, but I liked it. I gave it mm -hmm. eight and a half out of ten messages in bottles. Yeah. So I just I thought this was a great yep. backstory. To even what even if it to does it. kind of rip off the Martian. Yeah. Come but, on. But it's, she was it's, stranded on the it's, planet. It's cast away in space. It's just like the the Martian rip but off cast away and this kind of but, If it was that planet, they but, did it but the whole, suited to that planet, yeah. to ego. Yep. I mean I know. They were faithful to the planet. Right. So I know. You know. So we'll see what happens, but uh, yeah. All right, as we pass the two finally, as as we pass the two hour mark, yeah, and what could be the longest episode we've ever done. <laughs> but there's seven shows. Yes, so. there are seven shows. So yeah. real quick, last show, Arrow 404: Beyond Redemption, written by Beth Schwartz mm -hmm. and Ben Sokolowski, directed mm -hmm. directed by Lexi Alexander, hmm. which is really interesting because she's she directed the movie Punisher War Zone. Hmm. That starred Ray Stevenson as the Punisher. Interesting. Good little action director, in my opinion, mm -hmm. because I actually thought those action scenes in that were really good. Mm -hmm. So here she is directing Arrow. So that's a pretty good get for Arrow, in my yeah, in my opinion. And the action scenes were good in this too. Yeah, and uh, so um, we've we start off the episode with Laurel and Thea arguing over uh, telling Oliver about Sarah. Mm -hmm. uh, Laurel doesn't want to tell him. Mm -hmm. But uh, so Thea says maybe we should tell him. And complaining about this building that yeah. that uh, yeah they've been summoned to, <laughs> Oliver. Right, that's true. Uh, Oliver, why is there? Why does he want to make a lair with windows? <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> Let's not put our lair here. Exactly. Uh, Oliver tells Team Arrow that hey, guess what, guys? I'm running for mayor. And mm -hmm. nobody seems to care. Right. Crickets. Kee -kee. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kee -kee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought I was expecting more here, guys. Thanks for the support. <laughs> right. Really? Um, so we find out. Yes, yes. Backpats all around. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice, Oliver. Right. Yeah, exactly. Go bake, go bake some, uh, you know, some, uh, uh, what is it? Cookies or um, soufflés. Go bake some right. soufflés. Soufflés. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we find out that the new 3.0 Arrow Cave is revealed to be in the basement of the campaign office that used to belong to Brother Blood. Right. So and badass. Yeah. Uh, I like it. Yeah, it's been modified a little bit, designed by none other other than Cisco Ramon and Team Star Labs. Mm-hmm. Which is and you can tell him and Caitlin really, but. Mm -hmm. Maybe some Professor Stein thrown in. Sure. Because he was helping out there for a while. But, uh, yeah, so that's they're making use of it, I guess. So. Mm -hmm. You don't think Barry came and helped out? Uh, he probably helped with the construction. Sure. Yeah, because otherwise, how'd they get that thing put up so fast? Right. Yeah. But that might explain why the wiring isn't great. <laughs> Could. I don't know. Uh, Team Arrow ends up investigating this uh, situation where you've got dirty cops killing people. And... So, in order to lure the dirty cops out, uh, Thea and Diggle end up going to a nightclub undercover, undercover, quotes, uh, to score some drugs. Mm-hmm. But, um, oh, okay. And um, the, uh, what is it here? They, they try to set this trap for the dirty cops. The firefight breaks out. The dirty cops fail to take the drugs, but end up escaping. Right. So... Uh, actually, they do take the drugs. They do take. I thought they didn't work. Yeah, no, the van takes off behind their car. Oh, okay. I didn't think they got the drugs. Okay, they took it. That's on me. Sorry. That's all right. All right. Sorry about that. I guess they. I thought so the first time too. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, nice. <laughs> 
Yeah, so it's a kind of a big, true. so it's a big fail all around, guys, for Team Hero. A lot of that going on. You're getting. I see. I see the theme going through our episodes this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Felicity ends up identifying uh, the leader of the Dirty Cops as Liza Warner, mm-hmm. who is based on a DC, a really obscure DC Comics character called Lady Cop. Yeah. Um, you're gonna have to look up Lady Cop, guys, because this is like this. Re- I mean, I never until I heard the c- casting because. Rutina Wesley from True Blood, Tara from True Blood, mm-hmm. uh, ends up playing Liza in this episode. Right. And I love the the actors a lot. Now, me, being a longtime DC Comics guy, had never heard of Lady Cop before this, before that casting was announced. Right. I had to look up Lady Cop, and so that's saying something. Right. She was in The Atom, A-T-O-M, yeah. The Atom. Yep. But, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, she had like one issue. I think she had like her own comic or something. A first issue first, special first, number four. Okay, first. So she was part of first issue special. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, so Oliver ends up discovering in the process of identifying Liza. Oliver sees Lance meeting with Damien Dark. So it's like, okay, now you know, like the pieces are starting to come together. Uh, realize that maybe Lance can't be trusted, perhaps. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Uh, Lance and Detective Lance ends up coming home, or excuse me, Captain Lance now, I keep forgetting. Lance comes home, finds Oliver waiting for him. Mm-hmm. Oliver, at long last, lays into Lance, calls him out on his hypocrisy, saying, you know, like all the judgment he's been heaping on Oliver for years. Mm-hmm. And it's like, here you and Good for him. Yeah, about, about time. Somebody mm-hmm. did this. So we had Felicity kind of laying some truth down last week. We've got this week. We've got Oliver laying the truth down. I like how he keeps breaking into Lance's apartment. Yes. Hey, yes. you know, I got a heart condition, right? <laughs> yeah. Nobody seems to care about this heart condition because, no. hey, we told we told Lance about that. Hey, Sarah's back alive. Right. So, yeah. Um. So Oliver, Oliver talks about like uh, they've completely forgotten about this heart condition. Oliver mm-hmm. uh, said he wanted to impress Lance, but now he's just sickened by him. Mm-hmm. So long overdue conversation, in my opinion. Yeah, I think without this father figure anymore, he's been trying to uh, really kind of um, make him proud. Right. And now that he sees these clay feet, mm-hmm. he's he's incredibly disappointed right because he's come back trying to make the city better and he cannot live up to lance's expectations example yeah. expectations yeah uh because he sees lance as just a, a by the book good guy right but, and, but here he is palling around with damien dark now right yeah and this is just yeah. this completely yeah. is shatters a, shatters his whole image perception right of this guy. It's a complete betrayal. Yeah. So the so the odds of Lance dying uh, by the end of the season are looking pretty good right now. Yeah, they are be, kind of being that name on the grave mystery gravestone. It's looking pretty good that it might be Quentin Lance mm-hmm. at the moment. Um, in the basement of Laurel's apartment, Laurel or speaking of uh, Quentin, he shows up to shoot his daughter Sarah. Yeah. Because under the vice of Damien Dark, like, you know, you got to take, you know, you got to put her She's out of not her mis- your mystery. She's not your daughter anymore. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Laurel stops him, and then they have this huge breakdown cry together. Right. Before Quentin runs off. Mm hmm. And as um, Laurel's chasing after him, uh, the dirty cops show up and right. abduct Quentin. Laurel ends up getting tased. Like, don't tase me, bro. Thud. Right. <laughs> uh, well, she's not dead, but still. No, but still, yeah. She's like, don't tase me. Uh, thud. Yeah. yeah. Like that. Like that. Just like that. Mm-hmm. That was exactly. that, that was my dead on recreation. I'll, that was pretty good. I'll take my Academy Award now. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Liza, Lady Cop. Lady mm-hmm. Cop. It's like such a 70s thing. Yeah. Lady Cop. Actually, apparently, um, Police Woman was based on Lady Cop. Really? I, th- yeah. I thought it would be the other way around. I thought Lady Cop would be based on Police Woman, like a ripoff. But... It said C Police Woman. Okay, maybe it's, maybe it's the other way around. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so Liza ends up taking Quentin to her base. Mm-hmm. Green Arrow shows up and frees him. But for some reason, 
Green Arrow, the big superhero, ends up getting a knife stuck in his back. Mm-hmm. So, well done, Holly, once again. Right. Um, Mr. Big Bad Superhero, yeah, gets taken out by Lady Cop, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, Liza continues, like, to threaten Oliver, says she might, you know, like, cut his spine or whatever. Uh, Just a twist and I can it, sever your spinal cord. Exactly. Lance chalks her down, though, appealing to her sense of justice, and then he ends up arresting her. So that's... Right. And he does this big soliloquy about, you know, we can make this city great. Right. He lays it on, she he says, lays, he lays it on thick. Right. Because she says, I'm going to leave this city just like everyone else. Mm-hmm. And he does this whole thing. And it's it's aimed at Oliver, obviously. Right. But, yeah. But it's also to talk her down, so... Okay, so, and instead of turning himself in, uh, turn, uh, Oliver asked Quentin to go, like, be their spy on Damien Dark. Right. And work for them so they can learn more about what he's up to. Right. Will you please offer your, yourself up on a platter? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you want to be our sacrificial lamb? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is exactly what he's doing. Yeah. So. And meanwhile, in those flashbacks we don't care about, uh, Oliver brings Conklin, the redneck soldier guy, to see the body of the woman he killed, in air quotes. Mm-hmm. Conklin discovers that... Uh, when did he have time to go to the cave and to make her look like she was dead? Who knows? Do these flashbacks have any logic to them at all? Well, Conklin said, take me to her and show yeah. me her body. Yeah. But when did he have time maybe, to go? Maybe and, he did it before he came back. To how did he know that Conklin was going to... He, he He's Oliver Queen. He prepares for any contingency. Whatever. Yeah, I know. Uh, so Conklin seems, con- the worst. Conklin seems convinced. Until... Until he ends up... Uh, <laughs> yeah. As he's traipsing through the woods, he f- comes across uh, Oliver's Argus communications device that he That's right. uses to communicate with Amanda Waller. Right. So And yeah. he does this. You crazy kid! Shakes fist. Right, exactly. And, yeah. He's so angry. I'm so angry at you. Yep. And also, they really are stressing the, the point that this is the same island. Yes. Leanne, he was Leanne, Leanne, Leanne Yu. Yeah. How on earth did they bring all these were people? These people on the island, and they didn't know about all the other people on I, the island. I, my only um, thinking is that these military guys brought, like, they had a big, you know, like, um, a big uh, supply jet or whatever, and they brought these people over to harvest these poppies or whatever they're harvesting for, uh-huh. for the drugs. Like, right. Like they figured out, okay, there's drugs around this island. We need slave labor. So we'll bring in the slave labor to harvest harvest them. So that's my thinking. Okay. But why didn't they know about all the other guys on the island? I don't know. See, that's what I'm saying is because he says, you've been stuck on this island. It looks like you've killed before. Yeah. But you, you must not have because you've been stuck on this island. Yeah. So they obviously didn't know that there were other people on the island. I don't know. And it's such a huge plot hole. Yes, it is. Like okay. all, all of a sudden, these on this deserted island, there's all these people. Yes, I know. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, some of them speak English, so they maybe they have all been stranded too. Maybe there was like a big boat and it crashed, and I don't know. Or maybe they're like pirates, you know? Like they they so, they hijacked a uh, like a uh, a boat. And then they brought it with the with the past. Well, no, I don't. Like I don't doubt that they brought the slaves on. Yeah, it's just all these other people that were on. I know. With you know before, right? Like Slade and all his guys yeah, yeah. and all the. Yeah. Are there just no signs that they were there before? I don't know. I don't because that would at the, least indicate the, there were other people on the island that he could have killed. Yeah. I'm right. St- I'm still trying to figure out who laid down all those landmines. Was it Eddie Fire's group? Yeah, I don't know. From season one? Well, they were talking about that it was probably like War- Korean. Maybe left over from World oh. War II or something? Yeah. Okay. Well, that would make or sense, something. I guess. I don't know. Maybe the Japanese had that island at some point? Whatever. I don't know. Does it really matter? No. Okay. No, because Lian Yu is the worst storyline yeah. in this whole yes. thing. If Arrow gets season six, we better not be getting flashbacks. Let's put it that way. We are, though. Because they're going to do flashbacks until he comes back. 
Right. But I mean, five years. He was on the island five years. Okay. So if this is year five. Yeah, all right. Well, this is year four, but eventually it will be year five yeah. next season. So yeah. pres- theoretically, next season we would see the last of the flashbacks. So please let's let's hope so. Can we let this be the last season? I was thinking last season should be in the last for the flashback. I I was thinking the first season. Should I know, be the last I, know. I know. So anyway, back in the present day, Oliver mm-hmm. enters his campaign office, finds it's fully staffed, because Thea brought staff in out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Where she got these people, I have no idea. Maybe she like they're interns. She yeah. Well, she said she got them through Verdant. Right. Okay. That's what she said. That's what she said. Yeah. So, and she also wrote Oliver a speech because apparently she's a speech writer all of a sudden. It's all the stuff that he said. She yes. just wrote it down. Right. <laughs> and remembered word for word. Exactly. Every, sure. Everything. Yeah. Um, and lastly, we get the whole business with uh, Laurel discovering that Sarah's escaped. Surprise. Right. So. And then there's the whole part with Ray. And the message. Yes, and, yes uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, one thing I forgot was like uh, Michael Holt, or Curtis Holt, excuse me. Now it's Curtis Holt in the show. Um, right. He helps Felicity try to figure out what's going on with her phone. Uh, well, she thinks he's playing a prank on yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. And it turns out there's that Ray left this recorded message for Felicity, but Felicity right. doesn't want to play it. Right. And then at the end of the episode, she ends up playing it. Right. And his password is password. Word, yeah. But Felicity knows this. I think they mentioned that before. Why would his password be password? Because he's, yeah. There's no way a tech guy. Would have password for password? Never. Yeah. That's ridiculous. <sighs> it is ridiculous. Okay. Okay. So, um, but the good news is, is that next week we get the return of John Constantine. Woo! That's right. In Haunted. So we'll talk. But this episode was pretty bad. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Although it was okay. It was okay. Know. It was all right. Yeah, uh, there were hand waves. I gave it a high rating. Yeah. Um, I think mostly because of the um, stuff with him actually finding out about Lance and yeah. confronting him. I thought that was See? overdue. Yeah. And I love the fight scenes. Right. Again, that was Lexi Alexander, so right. she's actually a former stunt woman, I think, that yeah. that became a director, so she knows how to choreography or choreograph a fight scene. Right, right. So well done. It, there just seemed to be a lot of hand waves, and I hated the island stuff. Yeah, and that served, served no purpose. The flashbacks needed to go. Yeah, but uh, so what? Did you and do? I did like how they decided um, once Lance started working with them. He said, "Well, they have." weapons specifically to counteract you guys <laughs> so they changed all their stuff up and that's when they could you know the frequency of the canary cry and right, all that stuff. right i thought that was cool and and so it was plausible that when they came back they could kick ass right so, so what did you give this episode i actually gave it nine nonchalant stab wounds Ooh. so you rated this one well, pretty high yep he was he was back up and yep. ready to go after this knife was pushed right into his back. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. Yep. No bleed, yeah, like no limping or, you know, like yeah, nothing. Oh, nothing. He's perfectly fine. He, he just, yeah. he probably worked on the salmon ladder. And I looked back at it. Yeah. It, it was all the way into the hilt. Yeah. In his back. But, you know. Ouch. Maybe he rubbed some of that stuff from the island on it and it just got magically better. Right. You know, that stuff that he brought over. Yeah. So, yeah. And then someone asked him, hey, what happened? It was a motorcycle accident. It was yeah. really stupid. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he used to say all the time. <laughs> Lame excuse. Yeah. Yeah. I gave this one um, eight out of 10 dirty cop tasers. Yeah. It was a good episode. Yeah. I'm grumbling about nothing, really. I don't know why I was grumbling. I liked it. Yeah. I was... And I liked the stuff back at the lab. I thought that was really heart wrenching. So uh, kudos for the stuff, you know. So kudos. Felicity. Yes. Got it. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> kudos to everybody out there who have survived this long through this marathon of seven and episode or seven episode discussions yeah and i know we're running late but we do have feedback so what's our feedback it's a short one okay because it's just who do you think it's from justina of course do Do i it's she's awesome i know she is awesome so play it okay all right Hi, Karen and Charles. It was a super, super, superhero television. <laughs> Monday. Got them. I really didn't like this episode. It really, really made me sad. I give it 8 out of 10 fates worse than death because any show that can make me feel that sad st- 
still deserves a high mark for being well written, even though I didn't really like the episode. The end scene reminded me of the island and the doll maker, and I saw the sign for Wayne Industries. Do you think that if Kat ever finds her friend there, this will be one of the strikes against Bruce that will make Catwoman and Bruce enemies in the future? Supergirl was so super! I give it 9 out of 10 axe piercing eyes. I like the explanation they gave to bridge the age difference between Superman and Supergirl and the explanation of how the villains got to Earth. I like this idea of this character being a good role model and Kara really gave me a Felicity vibe. Flash gets 7 out of 10 Sharkman. I like that Dr. Stein found a new partner and Firestorm is flying again. When Caitlin replaced the picture of Ronnie in the computer, I think this is a signal that this is the beginning of a new chapter for her. The battle in the football field reminded me of when Flash went up against Reverse Flash, and I thought they were totally kill kidding about the Shark Man, so I nearly jumped off the couch in surprise when I saw him. King Shark! Ace of S.H.I.E.L.D. gets a 10 out of 10 nearly sunless planets. The sun only rises once every 18 years. Wow! This is easily my favorite episode of the series to date. I loved it. I, Zombie. 6 out of 10 dogs named Dog. I also like that Ravi calls him Minor since it's Major's dog. That's funny. I didn't really like this episode that much, but I do love that Peyton is back, and I wonder what if Major, being the zombie, zombie hunter, kills that new zombie that has the utopium recipe in his head without knowing that that guy is the key to the cure. And Arrow. 8 out of 10 biometric suitcases. Quote of the week, this must be what talking to myself feels like. <laughs> and that whole part about the text saying, you need to text me at least one real word. <laughs> also, I only watched it once, but it looks like the password to Ray's computer is password, mm -hmm. which really makes me laugh if that's true. He is so smart, but he uses password as his password. I love the character development between Lance and Oliver. I'm still not getting anything out of the flashbacks this year. Am I missing something crucial? No. Sometimes I think they should string <laughs> them together as one big long episode. Or, or get rid of them altogether. Or with some webisodes that they could put on the CW app. Because switching back and forth sometimes takes me out of the story. Get rid like of there's them. there's twice as many commercial breaks. <laughs> I will never give up on Star City. Don't forget to vote Oliver Queen for mayor. Have a super week. Or get rid of them altogether. <laughs> She's adorable. I know, I like her. Um, so if you want to send feedback, and you really should, uh, you can tweet us at Fandom Zone Cast. Uh, you can log on to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Fandom Zone Podcast. I'm using my hands a lot, aren't I? Yes, you are. And what are you snacking on? It's a cough drop. Cough drop, okay. Because I've been coughing, sorry. Look, that's all right. Or you can email us at fandomzonecast at gmail.com. Uh, I am at Elevaria mm -hmm. on the Twitter machine, <laughs> and I have updated my About Me links, and that is in my bio right. on Twitter, uh, and you are? I am at Charles Skaggs on the Twitter machine, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at Charles Skaggs I'm on- I'm getting punchy, I'm sorry. That's all right, and at Charles Skaggs on Instagram, um, on the Google Plus for all you crazy kids in the Google Plus. Yay! And I'm on the Facebook and my blog of geeky things, Damn Good Coffee and Hot. And hot. And hot. <laughs> and where I talk about a lot of comic book shows on TV as if we haven't talked about enough for right now. But right. yeah, so there's more there. Supplemental material, if you will. That's right. And Well, now they have enough to, for the ride into work and the ride back home from work. Pretty much. You got a, like a whole like cross-country uh, trip here <laughs> in this right. episode. So uh, don't say you're not getting your money's worth. Uh, we're free. I know we're free. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Just roll with it. Okay. I'm rolling. Um, so, yeah. Uh, other than that, um, please uh, give us a like on iTunes. Uh, like us, like give our page on Facebook a like. That would be great because we only have 50, sure. 58. We could always use more. Um, sure. Hopefully you enjoy the show. And, uh, you know, check us out there. And, uh, like, at Phantom Zone Cast on Twitter. As you said. That's right. So, yep, mm -hmm. check us out. So, until next time, where we have seven more of these to go through. So, we'll hopefully try and get those, through those a little quicker. 
That's right. And well, I'll be in charge next week. Yeah, so, so it's all my fault. That's okay. I'll take no, I'll it's t- not. I'll take the heat. That's okay. No, we talk all the time like this. Yeah. So. All right. We have a lot of stuff to get through. All right. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye, everyone. Bye.